Now, as per usual, I will be munching during this. I will try and get it out of the way ASAP, though. Okay, um, so we're in the middle of the final trial. Um, our good buddy Espella is being accused of being the Great Witch yet again. The storyteller was seemingly eaten by her fire dragon, dragon spell, Gron Worm, and um, though it probably wasn't her, pretty sure it's Darklaw, uh, who is mm. prosecuting this case. Our other good buddy, um, what, what's the prosecutor's name? The normal one, I'm forgetting. Barnum. Barnum. Um, yeah, it's not a pun, so I couldn't remember it. Um, oh yeah, it is. Barnum, is it? I mean. Mm -hmm. Burnham, burn the witch. Oh, that's actually really cute. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hear Barnum and it immediately autofills to end Bailey. So I I couldn't, uh. couldn't really think of anything else. Um, He has been imprisoned on pretty fault, like pretty flimsy charges of treason charges. by Dark Law because she's being evil. And uh, Maya and Nick are currently basically stalling and investigating so that Espella doesn't get murdered uh, while Leighton and Luke are looking for the clues TM at the tower. And the last thing that happened was we climbed up the bell tower and found Kira, the witch from the second witch or second trial of this game, first witch trial, still alive, hiding in the tower. All right. So we'll see what happens. Blah, 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 Leighton, blah, blah, blah. Scary. Also, this is a first time playthrough for me and Siv, so please, please don't spoil anything if you know. Yeah, don't go um, spoiling shit, man. I'm, I'm very excited to figure out what the dumb latent twist is, because mm -hmm. there's always mm -hmm. a dumb latent twist as long as it's not uh, fucking Mir Mask of Miracles or Azran Legacy. Anyway, let's go. Mm. It's so quiet in here. There's not a sound to be heard. Let's be very careful, though, Luke. The puzzle we just dealt with is not necessarily the only one in this place. All right, you are, Professor. Let's proceed with caution. Wait, is this going to be the finale? You guys. <laughs> is this what I think it is? It looks like a lift, but it also looks suspiciously similar to the caves that they burn the women in. <laughs> Somehow phrasing it as burn the women is way, f like, <laughs> way funnier and weirder. Indeed it does. It looks a lot like the kind of lift of which we are all well acquainted. But we haven't seen anything like else like this since we've arrived in Abrithia. Yes, we have. No. <laughs> sweet baby boy, please use your sweet baby brain. Yes, quite. In truth, I didn't think machinery of this sort existed here. I wonder what it's using as a source of power. Well, since there seems to be no other way up, does that mean we get to ride it? Indeed. That would seem the most logical course of action. I must say I find the presence of such a device most intriguing. But we can't stand around pondering such things now. There will be time for that later. Onwards and upwards, my boy. Right then, let's go! I know I keep saying this, Luke, but bear in mind we must proceed with caution. Yeah, I'm on now, yup. Luke, before I set foot into this lift, remember, uh... That thing just fucking shot the hell up. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna throw up. Professor, we've stopped. What's going on here? Are we trapped? No, I don't believe so, Luke. Although I do get the feeling that something is about to happen. Something? Professor, what do you mean by something? Oh! I thought those were like needles and they were just gonna stab them. Luke, Ooh. stand close to me. Okay! Puzzle. Ooh. You take the moon. <laughs> and you take the sun. You take everything that seems like fun. Oh, an owl. A stone statue stands before you. Beneath it, uh, beneath it lies a panel with what appears to have once been a crest of some kind, now a disjointed mess. Move the panels by touching the arrows that connects them and rearrange the pieces so the crest is correctly displayed. Okay. Oh, I only have four turns. I was going to say it's kind of a simple puzzle. 
Oh, it's like this. Got it. Clang. Okay. Uh, I have to think. Boo. Boo. First things first, right out the gate for this stream, using your brain. I don't like that I have to wait for it to do that thing. I mean, you did it. Mm. Mm. Ah. No, I should restart. Yeah, you should. Let's see if I've proven myself. Ah, the joy of solving puzzles. You sound so chuffed. Just so chuffed. Whoa, jeez. Whoa, we started moving again! It would seem this entire lift is, in itself, another puzzle put in place to something. I don't believe we're in the clear just yet. This may take a while. Is that Danny? Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm late. <clears throat> no, you did. Oh, oh, stopped again? Another stage of the puzzle? Hmm, indeed. That would appear to be the case. I'll take on this one. Oh, you're Luke. <laughs> I'll take on this one, Luke. <laughs> All right, but don't overexert yourself. Do you have enough electrolytes to solve this puzzle? We'll need to work together to solve the rest of this puzzle. What did that? Danny, I don't think you're going to have anyone to voice for a while, so do you want to voice the puzzle descriptions? Oh, sure, why not? <laughs> sure. <clears throat> oh, God. Cool. A stone statue stands before you. Beneath it lies a panel with what appears to have once been a crest of some kind, now a disjointed mess. Move the panels by touching the arrows that connect them, and rearrange the pieces so that the crest is correctly displayed. Oh boy. Have fun. <laughs> I don't want to. I hate, I hate fun. I am Professor. I hate puzzles. You know, I, I don't know if they needed to animate this thing stomping every time I do this. <laughs> Here's some anxiety. Go. I've already seen the Good job, Luke. I solved it, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, Layton took the, uh, he took the credit because he was the only one with arms strong enough to lift the things. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> I did it, Professor! You certainly did. Well done, Luke. But, oh, we're still not there, are we? Just how far is this lift going to take us? Well, judging by all the stages thus far, whoever put this puzzle in place is certainly keen that we don't re reach the top easily. Still, we can't afford to let our guard down. This little... thing must literally be like 50 plus stories. Jeez. This is a fun <laughs> exercise in how fast you can parse a line without forgetting it. <laughs> Oh, we stopped again! It's like the opposite of the Path of Radiance endgame with Sephirin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, then, allow me to take on this one. I hope that Luke solves this puzzle. Yeah! <laughs> I, I assume since the first two descriptions are going to be the same, this is actually just going to be the same one a third time. Pretty much. Six! That's a number! <laughs> <laughs> Was that a chimera? Oh, it's a gargoyle! Yeah! Oh. Yeah. Is the same thing? Do you want me to read it again? Give me a second. Um, no, sorry, I have to respond to my landlord. He's trying to fix a water leak. I'm just gonna uh -oh. do this on voice for speed. I won't be awake <laughs> at that time, but if you don't need to come inside, that's okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. I am a slow texter. All right, let's compete. That's a cool crest. Uh, alchemy. <laughs> oh my god, whoa. L oh lord, he... he oh lord, he coming. <laughs> Oops, I fucked that up. Oh, I wish there was an undo. Sure, I'll do that. Why not? Fuck it. You would think they would put an undo button the, in these kind of cases. This game's been really nice about that. Usually, I think this is like maybe the first time I've been like, there should probably be an undo button here. <laughs> True. Okay. True. Oh. There we go. Yeah, you did it! Not that these are super hard, but I've been glad I've been flying through them. Mm -hmm. I am not good at Professor Layton puzzles. 
And the closer they are to a slide puzzle, the worse I am at them. Oh, he who. Uh, same. <laughs> that was an exceedingly difficult puzzle. The next stop must be our destination. I think you're probably right, Luke. Hooray! Well, this is it, Professor. We finally get to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck yes. E. Cheese. I like Chuck E. Cheese. The tokens look like hint coins. <laughs> it seems we have arrived at last. <laughs> oh. They're really just trying to shove every possible Civ aesthetic into this game somewhere, aren't they? <laughs> A game for me! Wow! This is certainly different! There are flowers and plants everywhere! I can even see a water wheel over there! It is a beautiful place. <sighs> this evening breeze is a little mm. chilly. So, is this the storyteller's garden then? I think that's probably a safe assumption, Luke. Judging by the abundance of water and rose bushes, it's being well taken care of. I'd be inclined to say the tower seems more akin to a castle. Who'd have imagined we'd end up in a beautiful place like this? Let's investigate! Hint coins? Hint coins in the garden for Leighton? I scrounge around <laughs> like an anteater. He root them up like a veggie table. <laughs> <laughs> he eatest burritos them. <laughs> oh, the, the something about this this background has like slightly different contours when you scroll through it than most maps, and it feels very strange, actually. <laughs> oh, try the water wheel. <laughs> I'm I'm getting the coins. Uh, there was a water I wheel. I said try the water wheel, boy. There isn't one. Yes, there is. Next to the gazebo. See it? It's moving. It's a 3D. Nope. Right, 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 up. I I absolutely have no idea what you're looking at. The spinning thing. Go down. In the... Oh, your screen's too dark. You can't see it. Oh. <laughs> I... So, up by the gazebo. Go to the right. Keep going. And your, your cursor is... That, that is black. On my screen. Yeah, no. It's it's a dark green water wheel. Yeah, so uh, for chat and probably Danny, uh, every laptop I've ever had has brightness issues and contrast oh. issues. So uh, if something is in this range of colors, it is black on my screen and there is nothing oh, no. I can do about it. So it's like, literally, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's just making shit up again. I I was like, I there is not a water wheel. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I was like, I don't see anything. All right. Maybe I need to... Can we go this way? Let's go home, <laughs> my boy. Oh, my God. Hint coins. There must be a third hint coin somewhere. I know I don't need more than 150. <laughs> but I like to have them. I love that this game is just, oh, that's not the direction I wanted to go. Let's ride it up <laughs> and down. I'm sure that Phoenix and Maya have the case covered. Oh boy. All right. God, this nice. stalling bit. That was pretty good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> A speller must have lived here when she was younger. Yes, indeed. This must have been her family home. Dots. Her family? I wonder if she had any plans to ever come back here. No matter where she goes or what she does, family is family. This will always be her home. I don't know if that's entirely true. I'd say it's yeah, not... It's super yeah. not. I'm just trying to look on the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's highly likely that she would wish to come back here someday. I suppose so. Even if her family was only the two of them. The relationship between Aspella and her father may well prove to be an important clue. 
Yes, I was thinking the same thing. Huh? What's the matter, Luke? Uh, it's nothing. I'm probably seeing things. There's a water wheel over there. There is no water wheel, Luke. You are crazy. <laughs> Well, for a moment there, I thought I saw something moving at the top of the tower. Oh, sorry, it must have just been my imagination. Uh, let's go inside, Professor. I wish I had an imagination. <laughs> Do not cry for Leighton. Do not cry for all. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. This appears to be... Child's room. Rapid fire, my because Jay and I just watched Spirited Away, and this reminds me of the baby's room. Um, mm. my brain went, "Oh, this looks like a Ghibli movie. I'd love to see Level Five and Ghibli make a thing together." No! And they went, "Oh, they did, and it was bad." <laughs> oh no! Ah! <laughs> ah! God. For. There's a game called Nino Kuni, and whenever your entire team uses like a team attack, which is very frequent, there's this extremely lackluster battle cry where everyone goes, "Ah!" <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very funny. It certainly looks that way. From its condition, I'd say it hasn't been used for some time. Presumably, it was used by a speller as a child. Right. So this is where Speller grew up. Something pretty big must have happened to make her re leave her home so young. Oh, I wonder how Espella and the storyteller used to get on together. Espella is a young lady of strong conviction and a kind heart. I'm sure that's because she grew up with a fine home environment. In other words, I'm sure you are... Where are you getting this from, Leighton? I'm sure she and her father he must have... He tried to have her killed! I mean, as far as we know, he tried to have her killed and ostracized, and then she killed him. So, not sure about this one, buddy boy. In other words, I'm sure she and her father must have spent some quality time here together. Yeah, I have a feeling you're right about that. I feel like we've been lied to. For This place must have been pretty great. I almost feel like we're intruding coming in here like this. But Luke, we have no choice if we wish to save Espella. Yes, I suppose that's true. When you put it like that, I guess she wouldn't mind, even if she knew. Don't like, oh. Don't oh, like don't that. Oh, I don't like that. Don't like that. What the fuck? Well, let's mm. look for hint coins. <laughs> Nothing suspicious here. When you're, in, when you're hiding in your bed and a top-hatted man comes into your room in the dead of night to look for hint coins. <laughs> This is how the tooth fairy works. Teeth. <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Where are the teeth? <laughs> Where are the teeth? Opens your mouth like a trap door. <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Don't like that. Crikey! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Professor, behind my curtain, there's someone there. Dots. Dolly? The mysterious figure turned out to be... Oh, just a door! Oh, oh, that's a relief! I don't like any of the implications of this. My heart was in my mouth! Espella must have played with this doll as a child. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what's this? Look, Professor, there's the child's picture book here. So I don't know what the big twist of this game is going to be. I'm really hoping it's like latent nonsense, nonsense within the magical world as opposed to like latent nonsense that created the magical world. Like, you see, Carmine slipped us a really impressive edible and now we're just fantasizing <laughs> all of this. Like, I don't care for that kind of twist, but I'm here for some nonsense. I'm good. The title is... The first story. Sound Horizon's really fucked up, you know. It would appear to be a handmade children's picture book. I wonder if it was written specially for Espella. It may well have been. Evidently, a great deal of loving care has been put into the writing and illustrations. Is this anime? <gasps> Here, Danny, you wanna? <laughs> yeah, narrate this. Okay. <clears throat> there was a bad witch in the town. The end. <laughs> all of the carrots in the field disappeared, and all the money in the bank was turned into pumpkins. <laughs> the people in the town had to, what? The people of the town had to put up with all kinds of mischief from the witch. They didn't know what to do. 
I I love the aesthetic of turning all the money in the town into pumpkins. I, I adore it. <laughs> Someone in chat, <laughs> my kind of crime. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Then one day, a brave young girl appeared and said to the townsfolk. When the witch uses witchcraft, she always uses a big stick, doesn't she? So if we take away her stick, we'll be able to stop her. After hearing this, the people of the town set a trap for the witch and managed to capture her. At her trial, the bad witch said to these people, Even now, the legendary great witch Bezella is living here in this town. Bezella is the queen of all the witches. She is the one who gives us witches life. The townsfolk punished the witch, and peace was restored to the town once more. To this day, Bazella is still hiding somewhere in this town. But the brave townsfolk will not be beaten by the bad witches. I feel like it's, I feel like it's one of those documentaries, like, her arms were cut off. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I love it, just like, she was punished, but like the illustration is like horribly graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Who'd have thought there would have been a fairy tale about Bazella? She's a mysterious character, all right. Tell me, Luke, why do you think the author chose to write about Bazella in a children's picture book? Huh? Uh, well, maybe to make the child behave? Something like, if you don't do as you're told, Bazella will come and get you. Yes, indeed. That is a possibility. Still, I have to wonder. Why is it that some lowly witch was caught, and not the great Bazella herself? Hmm. Well, I suppose it is a bit strange. If Bazella herself had been caught, the story could have been brought to a more conclusive ending. Do you think there's some other reason? It's certainly a possibility. I don't suppose there are any other handmade picture books in the room apart from this one. Handmade picture books, uh... We're in one, uh... Professor! <laughs> the, the twist Maybe of this that's it. The twist Maybe... of this game is just fucking <laughs> No, here, do your real prediction first. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, maybe what it is is that the storyteller isn't the one who made the town at all, and it's the great witch is literally summoning, like, the town and the story. Yeah, like, that's... Her magic is what creates it. That could be legit. I was gonna say, the twist at the end of this game is just like, well, it's Labyrinthia's just a storybook. I'm afraid it goes one level deeper, Luke. All of our world, London, everywhere we've been, it's all a video game. What? <laughs> he just looks directly at the DS screen. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be great. Uh, I don't see any. I guess this must be the only one. Which would imply this book has some special significance. Uh, I guess so. After all, it is handmade. I bet she really treasured it. Do you think it was the storyteller who wrote this book? The handwriting does seem very similar to that of the story. This book appears to have been written with a touch more care and attention, but I imagine it was the storyteller who wrote it. He must have written it as a gift from father to daughter. That actually seems really thoughtful, even if the story itself is a little scary. I'd like to take this book to a speller. That might not be a great idea. Yes, let's do just <laughs> that, Luke. We must take good care of it. Put it in my hat. He's got like a Mary Poppins bag hat. <laughs> His hat of holding. Hello. Oh. I believe we've seen all there is to see here. Let's press on, Luke. Ooh, it opens. Yes. Here in Labyrinthia, they have magical things called doors. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Someone needs to tidy up. Oh, I love that. I can, like, taste this room. <laughs> what do you make of this room, Professor? Well, it's not very tidy. This appears to be the very top room of the tower. Uh, the parchment lying on the floor here, here seems to be very similar to the type on which the storyteller writes his stories. I think we can stay with some certainty that this is the storyteller's room. Huh? This is the storyteller's room? Probably didn't do a lot for his mental health, walking through his absentee daughter's room every time he needed to come up here. Yeah. Yeah. 
just be like, hmm, okay. I'm sad now. Pat, pat, <laughs> little dolly. I was imagining something a bit grander, like a throne room with all kinds of posh decorations. ADHD is a hell of a drug, Luke. <laughs> While I agree that it's a little eccentric, it's unmistakably the study of an author. He probably spent all his time here continuously writing those stories. I feel it. Hey, that's me. Flashed backs. The stories. I wonder what a speller thought of it all. The father writing these stories for all the townsfolk, I mean. I wonder if she looked forward to seeing the new stories completed. Or is she... The stories were probably a little too mature in content for a young child. I don't imagine the storyteller would have shown Espella many of them. But in that case, surely she can't have had many opportunities to even talk to her father, given how busy he was. I guess that means she was pretty lonely. It must have been hard for her, even knowing how important those stories are for the people of the town. But I don't think it's right. No child should be unable to talk with their father. I absolutely agree, Luke. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm just remembering the Azran legacy for no reason at all. I believe it no will be Im I believe it will be important in the upcoming trial to have an understanding of Aspella's feelings towards her father. Don't cry, Luke. Makes me sad. <laughs> oh, with your with your little hyphen mouth. No <laughs> you Knowing you, Luke, I'm sure you must have a lot of things on your mind at the moment. So if there is anything at all that you want to talk about, you will tell me, won't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am always will. I am always ready to listen, Luke. Now then, shall we start investigating this room? I I just love Luke and Layton so much. They're both so charming. Oh look, a beta fish that hasn't been. Fed in weeks, and also no, I mean, in a tiny, awful I, jar. The, the storyteller comes up here, I think, is the implication. It's just that the room below... Well, he's dead now! Oh, yeah, this... We should probably take this fish. Sir, sir, how long have you been trapped in there? Weeks, my boy. <laughs> my boy. Finally, someone can understand. I am the true storyteller. He was a ghost oh, writer. I ghost wrote for the storyteller. Oh, story my God. <laughs> When you've got magical powers, but you're a bad writer, so you just say, I find a magical beta fish that gives me all my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Click on that dolly. Where? Oh. Bottom left corner, sitting on the piano. Again, I can barely see that. I got you. Thank you. You see, Professor Layton was born with less rods and cones in his retinas. <laughs> He's pot bat. I don't remember which one is contrast and which one is color. Uh, I think cones are color. Yep. Oh, professor. Yeah. It is a pahotograph. <laughs> Wait, I didn't think they even had photographs in this town. Oh, yeah. They drew everything. Very nice, Leo, my dad. Indeed. <laughs> you see, all of those sketches were really just Photoshop filters. It's not the kind of thing one would have expected to find here. You're right. I certainly haven't seen any cameras about since we got here. <laughs> Someone in chat going off jealous idea of Leighton being self-aware. Leighton looking at the screen. You, you, yes, you. You are currently playing this on an illegal emulator, aren't you? Oh, now no. that's not what a true gentleman would do. <laughs> I think oh. we have a fitting punishment for you. I don't think you should get to play this game. Perhaps you would like Ace Attorney Investigations 3? Well then, <laughs> do return once you bought a real copy, like a true gentleman. Fucking Corcus Alpha just Rice. shows up again. Extraterritorial rights! Oh god. Oh, there's no doubt that this is a photo, though. Oh, what could that mean? This may be in some way related to the tower being so closely protected. What do you see in the photograph, Luke? As I mentioned, my rods and cones are not what they used to be. Uh, there are two children, both are young girls. Oh! Aww. Oh, that is adorable. Dark Law is so cute! <laughs> Aww. That photo looks quite old, doesn't it? Oh, they have the matching pendants and everything. So they're just sisters, then. Yeah. Oh, I wonder who they are. I'm kind of stupid, don't you think? Luke, please. <laughs> well, 
I have no rods and cones, and you have no memory. Together, we are one investigator. Hmm. Well, one of them is surely a speller. There can be little doubt about that. Oh, hey, you're right. Come on, man. And look at that pendant. It's the same one a speller always wears. The fact that she's continued to wear it ever since shows just how important that pendant must be to her. Hmm, what about this other girl? Do you think she's a friend of a speller's? That must be Barnum. Indeed, I'd wager the two of them were rather close friends at that. They do look pretty chummy, all right. See, they even have the same pendant. A glimpse into a speller's past. This may well prove to be an important clue. I would like to ask her about it face to face. Let's borrow it for the time being. Steel. I wonder if there are any other clues looking around. It's the photograph. <laughs> well, I'd say there's something that you thought... Oh, well, I'd say the something that you thought you saw moving earlier is a point worth pursuing. But isn't this the last room in the tower? I must have just been imagining things. Not necessarily, Luke. If I'm not mistaken, there should be a way of getting beyond even this room. Let's look around more closely. I'll write you up, Professor. I'm gonna throw out some of my garbage. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look around the room. Oh. It's so hard because like it is dark on my end of the screen too, so I'm like I can't see anything. <laughs> Piano, dingle dingle. This I love this like the ugly, like deep rose colored paint splatters on this piano. Oh, oh, this is. What is it, Luke? There's ledger on top of the piano. This was evidence during our trial. Uh, that trial, my boy. Y yes, the trial about Sir Balduke's death. The trial when you were... God, the fucking worst twist is like Luke figures everything out and Leighton just puts a hand on his shoulder. I'm afraid I really did turn to gold, my boy. You've done it. You've moved on without oh. me. You don't need me. And then he just disappears. Professor! <laughs> ah, that you... Fuck that, man. You mean when I was turned to gold? In... God, the... The ending of the third Professor Layton game fucks me up so bad. It's got Don't such a. Every time. I'm not gonna say anything about it, but <gasps> it's got it's got a very good one-two punch, uh, of like here's here's a scene that wraps up this story, and then here's a scene that wraps up the trilogy, and both of them make me cry a lot. And putting them back to back is frankly unfair. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I I love that. That's the best Professor Layton game, I think. I'm glad you're playing it. I hope you enjoy it. Me too. I'm excited. I'm just scared. I'm just so scared. It's, it's really good. You'll like it. In which case... Uh -huh. It also has the best Don Paolo scenes in the whole, the whole <laughs> series. In which case, this oh. letter is the one that the storyteller's owl, Hoot, gave us after we last paid him a visit. I forgot about that, actually. Well, yes, it is, but... That letter was completely blank, wasn't it? Indeed it was. Oh, is this some knives out shit? That's not blank at all! <laughs> that was meant to be Sir Belduc's suicide note, <laughs> which he'd addressed to the storyteller. Luke's new catchphrase, he says once a case. Is this some knives out shit? <laughs> his, su <laughs> his suicide note, you say? But Sir Belduc's butler swapped the letter for some plain sheets of parchment before it got delivered. Someone in chat, I kind of want to see Jello cry. I cried a couple times in our Path of Radiance playthrough, actually. Uh, y Yam is Mist really fucking knifed me in the heart a few times when I wasn't expecting it. And I'm definitely going to cry uh, at the end of Radiant Dawn. Hmm. And those blank sheets were given to us by Mr. Who, who knew something was strange about them. Oh, Luke addresses animals with honorifics. That's adorable. <laughs> I see. I certainly missed out on some intriguing developments during my absence. The real suicide note was revealed at the trial. But how has it ended up here? Well, I imagine that's quite simple, Luke. It's likely that after the trial finished, the letter was returned to its rightful owner. It was addressed to the storyteller, after all. I, I guess that does make sense. I suppose the storyteller finally had a chance to actually read it then. Hmm, yes. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that he most likely did so very recently. Perhaps even today while sitting at the piano. What on earth was going through his mind here before that final parade? There's something we're not seeing here, Luke. We need to investigate this closely, Luke. 
Oh, what could it be? Surely this is not a trap of some kind. It's unlikely that a trap would be so obvious. Just a moment. There's some kind of puzzle in this piano. If you hit the keys in the right order, they, they, they play a song. <laughs> Hot cross bun. Hot cross bun. Hot cross bun. <laughs> Someone in chat. Jello oh. cried tears of joy when Maya was burnt to death. I think. True. I think. I I actually spent like twelve hours over the last two days um, going over Ace Attorney Investigations 2's third case to cut it down a little. That's very pretty. And um, there there's a moment of just like pure joy. When at the start of the case, which is like a flashback case, uh, Gregory Edgeworth and a young Ray walk into the crime scene and Detective Bad is standing there. And I was just mm. like, yeah, something, something, yay! And Siv and I both like <laughs> freak out with glee to see Bad there. Bad is like the only good thing to come out of Investigations 1. So I'm Love glad that-, that dude. I, he's really good. He's definitely the best character. Right. Below this, oh. yeah, go for it. Oh, below the stained glass window is written, When the stars have aligned, the goddess shall pluck her heart, bringing forth her serene song. Rearrange the musical notes to create a lovely melody. Man, I kind of, I just want to watch this. This is very pretty. It is. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. What? Hmm. Sorry, what am I supposed to? Oh, our, oh, oh, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't like that. Oh, it's upside down. I mean, it's it's aligned at a specific moment. Oh God, I oh no, and it's like this too. Fuck. Okay. I have literally no clue what needs to be done here. Give me two seconds. Do 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 do, do. cheating. Do do do. Got it. Alright, I screen capped it. <laughs> Let's. Uh, uh, okay. Um, over here, and then this one is here. Yeah, that should be correct. Put this one here. Put in this. I believe that's correct. Let's see if I've proven myself. Hmm. That would have been a lot harder. No, you not got it wrong. Piano explodes. That would have been much harder on not an emulator. <laughs> Hold on, Luke. Let me just screen cap this puzzle. <laughs> Do what? Excuse me. I Hold mean, on a moment. It really is just a waiting puzzle. A so. Could there be another room above this one? I I love piano puzzles that open secret passageways. It's very cheesy, but it's always cool. <laughs> I have a feeling that the rooftop we saw from the garden continues above here. Oh, I can see what you mean, Professor. It's really dark in here. But moonlight seems to be coming in from up above. Well, there's no turning back now. The answer to the biggest mystery of all is surely waiting for us ahead. I think so too, Professor. I wonder what on earth it could be. The next step in the story the moon, story. It's not on us. Not mistaken. <laughs> the next step? But the story has already finished, hasn't it? Not yet, Luke. It's still a little too soon for the ending. God, the soundtrack. Worry. Hey, fucker! Hello. <laughs> what up, punk? I sword am fight, fucker. Sword fight. I mean, you—it's not a Professor Layton property without a sword I fight. That you yep. all people would make it this far. <gasps> it's you. I thought so. You are still alive. Professor Layton, uh, yes, I am. I've had enough of your running around, flagrantly contravening the flow of my story. As such, I can no longer ignore your meddling. And my dear sword, <laughs> phrase. Professor! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Luke! Yeah, Luke! Yeah, Luke! <laughs> it's time to become oh, a true gentleman! <laughs> God, Professor Layton's so cool! Yeah! Thank you, my boy. No! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, 
Oh my goodness! A battle of wits! <laughs> well, the storyteller writes is destined to come true. Your opponent's attack are no exceptions. Memorize the storyteller's tale and deflect your opponent's predetermined moves. Eat? Okay. Enemy knights will appear in accordance with the storyteller's tale. Memorize the order of the attacks, okay. Use their moves against them. Touch the attack screens once you, once you have selected the order. Okay, all right. Go, tiny maiden! I'm afraid your role in the story ends here, Professor. Now, allow me to write the tale of your demise. This is Tiny Layton! It's the Tiny Layton final boss! It's adorable. Here, Danny, you can read these as well. The knight drew his blade. As the battle came to a close, he raised his blade overhead and delivered the finishing blow. Oh boy, okay. Down, left, right, up. Okay. Tiny Layton. Destroy! <laughs> well prayed, Professor. But how will you fare in this tragic tale? A new knight stepped in for his fallen comrade. He slashed quickly, delivering three blows before finishing the battle with a three-hit combination attack. Oh no. All right, Siv, I'm relying on you. Spin. Down. Left. Left. Oh, fuck. Down. Oh. Spin. All right. Uh, one more time. Spin. It was spin first? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, down? Yes. Left, left. Twice? Yes. Okay. Spin, no. down. Honestly, I'm like too busy listening to Danny, and I'm just like, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, not. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, I got it wrong! I'm sorry! You've killed oh. Tiny Layton. All right. Ugh. Okay. Spin. Down. Stab. Stab. Down. Spin. It's different every time, too. Okay. Spin. Down. Stab. Stab. Down. Spin. Good job. I I have quite literally zero short-term memory, so th this is actually a little difficult for me. Think you worked it out, did you? Let us see if you can predict the ending of this final chapter. The final knight drew his sword. As he attacked, he began to vanish into thin air, his movements veiled in the embrace of the shadows. Fuck. Okay. Down. Spin. Stab. S slash down. Oh crap. Nope. I guess you just guess? Yeah. Like you was down? Down, spin, slash. Stab. Stab. Down. Uh. Veil in the embrace of the shadows. I mean, well, I, I was. I think the fourth one was slash. Uh. So stab, slash, down, and then I. I, I mean, you'd think he would end with this one. Let's find out! Get him, Layton! Yeah! Alright. Hello. <laughs> hmm. Surprise, mother. The puzzle was murder. <laughs> Correct. Someone in chat, first try. I mean, I didn't get it right. Danny did. <laughs> The weapon triangle makes the advantage mine. <laughs> Ooh! Oh shoot. Isn't he an archaeologist? Yeah. So I'm like, what did he do before then to be this cool? He's he's just what like always that? been an extremely cool man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm awesome. Case of Boing. <laughs> well now, that was close. Yeah. 
storyteller. I'm afraid that the power of your pen is no longer absolute. <sighs> You never fail to impress me, Professor Layton. Hey guys, should we get a different voice actor for the antagonist in Layton? We never do. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are you trying to achieve? You could say, I'm trying to lift the veil that hangs over the town. You can just lift the cover off the book, you fool. No, don't you remove the dust the jacket. The answer lies in the final story. This very evening, the great witch Vazella will be tried and all stories will end. You should take your place in the gallery and observe the final trial. Permit me, if I may, to ask you a question, Mr. Storyteller. Why is it that you are here? What? You too should be watching in the gallery, watching as your twisted story unfolds. I mean, they would oh, reckon- Actually, should be dead. <laughs> My twisted <laughs> story? What do you mean by that? You must surely be aware that your story has already become twisted. Take our arrival in this town, for instance. Not to mention our being here at this very moment. Neither of these things could have happened in the story you wrote. In other words, what I'm saying is that you are no longer the weaver of the tale. It is Patty, the bread maker and maker of stories. Hmm, it is as you say. The story I crafted has indeed been twisted out of proportion by someone else's actions. I am not surprised that you realized. It seems nothing passes by those beady eyes unnoticed. Dots. What do we use? Shh, hush, my boy. <laughs> We must not let him know of, we must not let him know of my weakness. That is exactly why I decided to write the grand finale to prevent any further distortion. Do you mean to suggest that by ending the story, you could return this town to its original state? To its original state, you say? I am afraid that is not the case. The entire truth behind Labyrinthia is sealed by a single spell. That's Overdue. right. Overdue. The fi- <laughs> I cannot return this library book. The fees, the fees are astronomical. That's right, <laughs> the final spell. The final spell, you say? When that spell is invoked, Labyrinthia's true form will become clear to all. Oh, what kind of a spell is that? It is a spell that has always been hidden within plain view. What's that supposed to mean? Essentially, the final spell is concealed at the start. Hmm. The final spell is concealed at the start? What on earth are you talking about? I really, just with the positioning of the moon, I just want Layton to like reach out his arm without looking, grab it, and like take a bite out of it like it's a cookie. It's, dude, that's a fucking melon. <laughs> <laughs> moon <sighs> melon. I thought you two took it upon yourselves to unravel mysteries, do you not? Do, do what you will with it. Very well. Now then, I believe there's just one thing that... Yes, there's just one thing that you may wish to hear from me. And what would that be? Firstly, what would you say if I told you that this twisting of your story is leading towards a grand finale quite different to the one you had planned? What do you mean? This evening, you supposedly gave up your life to the great witch Bezella, did you not? As a result, the person thought to be Bezella is being tried in court at this very moment. Now, if you'll permit me to ask, do you happen to know the name of the accused? Naturally, I wrote the name myself. There can be no question. Of course, the name of the accused is Espella Contabella. What are you saying? You mean... My Espella is... Yes. The accused at this evening's trial is none other than Espella Cantabella. That... can't be. That's preposterous. This is your doing. What have you done, Leighton? You ask me what I've done, Mr. Storyteller? I am but a solver of puzzles and mysteries. I do not concern myself with scheming. My Espella? Why... how is she the accused? 
Perhaps you ought to go and see for yourself, Mr. Storyteller. Do you think it's a good idea to just stand here lamenting your daughter's fate? <clears throat> What's to be done? Well, Mr. Storyteller, I will be returning to the court. I'd like to witness this grand finale with my own eyes. <clears throat> ah, yes, before I leave, there is just one thing I'd like to make clear. I do not intend to simply take my place in the gallery and observe the trial. Naturally, there is only one place for me to stand in order to unravel all of these mysteries. The Witch's Cage. You... you mean to say you, that you will stand as the Defender? <laughs> Unfortunately, the Defender's position is already taken. Moreover, Mr. Storyteller, I am the one who knows the truth. The true identity of the Great Witch Bezella, that is. How... how can you know? There is only one place at which I should stand in order to assert such a fact, and that is not on the side of the defense. Surely you can't mean... I anticipate seeing you again soon, Mr. Storyteller. I am the final boss of this game. <laughs> don't, don't one that. fear. I'm gonna I... put my food away. Did I you mean, that's, that's the fun part of the setup of the third game, is that the setup is you're in, the, you're in future London where Leighton has become evil. And you have, to, you have to help future Luke to stop future Leighton. Oh. And that's not a spoiler. That's like literally the first hour of the game. Oh, okay. I don't think we, we just started recording, so. Yeah. Who are you doing I was wondering because everybody kept saying like, you, how dare you wear that hat? I'm like, like what? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, tell tell oh, chat not to on. tell chat not to spoil don't anything for you. That's a good game. Don't spoil it for me, please. Yeah. I'm playing through it right now, so I'd really appreciate if I if there were no spoilers in it. Please. Hey, hey, Danny, when do you play that, and what, where do you play it for the 400 people in this Mr. chat John. right now? Oh, I play it on my YouTube channel. at Skinny Mini. On YouTube. <laughs> court is in s once it court is here. However, I must say I'm quite surprised at this recent turn of events to see Miss Kira at the witness stand once again. Frankly, I cannot believe my eyes. Someone asked if you can link it in chat. Oh yeah yeah. Uh... You. Uh... You were most certainly sent to the flames as a witch. That's right. I was there. I saw it. She most certainly was. Th then how? How is she still alive? Is it because she's a witch? Can witches not die? No. She, she must have used Demir and just vanished in time. I say send her straight to the fire. We'll do it ourselves if we have to. Meow. Enough. Uh, does, a witch must be in. D does Danny want to take over Darklaw? Just yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There, sorry, I had to post it in the chat. Here we go. And I oh oh. Hang on. Okay. Boop. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Enough. A witch must be in possession of Talia. We've been saying Talia. Talia. Oops. Of Talia Magica in order to use magic. I hate to disappoint you all, but did you see such a thing on her person? I think not. But she must have... That girl must have used Demir. Surely you can see that, High Inquisitor. Demir is a spell able to make someone disappear from sight. It cannot make one vanish entirely. And besides, an investigation conducted by the Knights of the Inquisition has concluded that this girl is not capable of using magic. Listen well, Miss Kira. Your, your existence alone jeopardizes the very peace of Labyrinthia. Yet, given the current situation, it is now imperative that you testify to this court regarding what you saw. Immediately! That will not be necessary. Uh, what? This girl has already been convicted and tried as witch in a previous trial. What good would come of her testimony? Objection! But... She was found hiding at the crime scene. I'd say that makes her a very important witness. A witness whose testimony we cannot choose to ignore. Hi, Inquisitor Dark. What? I gotta take a phone call real quick, I'm so sorry. Okay, that is fine. We'll use that opportunity to tune, turn Danny up a little bit. Let me know if any one of us sounds significantly louder than the others chat. 
trapped. Ye. I, Inquisitor Darklaw, I'm afraid your objection is overruled. You wish to proceed, then? Very well. Let us see just how much of a story this girl is willing to tell the court, shall we? There's no doubt about it. Miss Kira must have escaped through the passage leading under the Chamber of Fire. Although, from the look of it, the judge doesn't have a clue that that escape route even exists. I wish he'd hurry up and get the hint. I'm dying to take this helmet off already. It's all right, you can just leave. Uh, you're right. The top of my head really itches. Sorry, Maya. Take that thing off now and we're as good as done. Just, I mean, are we? We, I, Wait, I feel hold like- hold on. Doesn't Maya have one of those doinkers at the top? She has that doinker at the top of her hair that is specifically meant to cushion someone's head from a helmet. Oh, is that what those are for? That is, that is what top mats are for. Oh, I didn't know that. Wouldn't it actually help our case for her to be like, I'm also alive, which trials don't do anything? I guess, yeah. Aww. Very well. Witness, you may begin your testimony. Explain to the court how you are standing here in court today, and why you are hiding at the crime scene. Yeah, she's seen some shit, ma'am. I really like Kira, actually. I'm not familiar with this Kira you keep talking about. I came from the Eldritch Woods. I'm an idiot and just realized she's wearing a shade cloak. Yes. I came to this town to summon forth the fire dragon and kill the storyteller. As it rained, I waited near the bell tower next to the vigilantes for my chance. I was only there to carry out my orders. I don't know anything else outside of that. You, you came here to kill the storyteller? Yes, that okay. was my task. Hi. Sorry about that. Yeah, I guess it's a... Uh... I guess I should ask. I, I wasn't sure if Kira would be testifying right away or not. Uh, which of you wants to take who? <laughs> if there's a preference. Um, I don't mind being Darklaw. Okay. Oh, that's the... Uh, that's here here she law. is! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, keep in mind, this girl was not the one who summoned the fire at the end. That was the accused. As I warned you earlier, there is nothing to be gained from this witch's testimony. Objection! Where did your accent go? Now hold on. She was still present oh, at she the. Has <laughs> yeah, everybody does They're except all Nick British, and Maya. Baby. <laughs> Whoops. That's that's been the fun of this is how many British accents can you do, and it's just so fun. <laughs> it's so difficult when you're switching back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Okay, I don't remember. She was still present at the she was still present at the scene of the crime with the intent to murder the storyteller. The defense insists we will be uh, we be permitted to continue with our cross examination on those grounds. Darklaw is really trying to weasel her way out of this cross examination. That means there has to be something there. <laughs> I must admit it. I too am extremely interested in hearing what this witness has to say. Defender you may begin your interrogation. So, Danny, you, you've played this game before, right? Um, yes. How far are we from the end of this case? Because I'm not against literally just hit uh, hint coining my way through and speed running it, because, <laughs> like, it might take a while. Um, you, mm, it's kind of at the, I mean you're at the end but it is going to take a little bit. This part takes a, takes a while. All right, I'll I'll go ahead and just hit coin then for stream's sake. I'm not I'm okay. not here to feel clever. We'll read these though. <laughs> I'll I'll And that's totally fine. I'll skim them once and see if I can get it immediately and if not I'll just hit coin. <laughs> Elders Woods, some of the dragon. Okay. Probably got to ask about her memory. Sure, here's my hint coin. <laughs> I love those options. There you go. Hold it. Miss Kira, who exactly gave you your orders? I cannot say. And why is that? I am not to disclose the identity of the one who has given me my orders. That in itself is an order. How convenient. I am only supposed to carry out my orders. Nothing more. I do not know anything else. And besides, there is nothing more that I can really do. 
nothing more she can do? But hold on just a minute. Surely you are capable of using magic. You are a witch, are you not? I am not a witch. Uh, what did you just say? I cannot use magic. Huh, I guess when you get shaded, your magic gets eight. She can't <laughs> use magic. Sorry, I was getting something. Uh, this girl is a witch. Every person in this courtroom knows as a matter of fact. There can own, there can be nary a doubt. Hmm, doesn't look like there's much to work with. Hmm, even though she just finished explaining everything, I still don't fully understand. Oh man, Nick, you don't think that this cure is actually some sort of crazy magical zombie, do you? Maya. You went through the same thing as Kira. Did you become a magical zombie? No, just a regular zombie. What? Yes, <laughs> not. <laughs> Luke and I couldn't believe. It. I'm actually spirit channeling myself right now. Luke and I couldn't believe How it does was. That even... <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions, Nick. Luke and I couldn't believe it was Kira when we ran her in, ran into her in the marketplace. I mean, we thought she. I'm not reading this right. I mean, we thought for sure she was a goner back at that trial. I don't think I'm far off, though. This Kira is way different than the old Kira. It looks like she doesn't remember a thing. It's almost like another person entirely. But what if that's just it, Maya? What if the Kira right here, right now, is the real Kira, and the old Kira wasn't? Huh. The real Kira, huh? There's only one witch in Labyrinthia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why. I think I'm bound to find something useful in her testimony. We can do this, Nick. I hope you're ready to slam on some desks because we're gonna do some serious pressing here. You're right. I throw Please. a hint coin at her. Press. Hold it. Hang on. <laughs> Hold it right Hang there, Miss Kira. You snuck right past the vigilantes? Oh, all right, I don't know why that double tap, sorry. Yes, that's right. I scootily dooted my way past them. <laughs> The girl is a witch. Therefore, something as simple as vanishing from sight is child's play. Isn't that right, witness? Yes, that is correct. Aha! I remember now. Just a few days ago, this girl used that very vanishing spell. Demir, if memory serves. Well, what are you gawking at, witness? Continue with your testimony. What was that just now? I could have sworn I saw Kira's face turn even paler than normal. Wait a oh second. There's something not right about this testimony. It's just a hunch, but what should I do? What? Oh, the hint coin's still active. That's nice. <laughs> I, Choose! It's, like, there's really... I guess they're like, well, if you want to solve the puzzles, you might need up to four hint coins per puzzle. And it's like, that's not what I'm using them for. <laughs> Miss Kira, I have one simple question for you. No, no, no more questions. <laughs> okay. We give up. Guilty. You stated earlier in your testimony that you snuck past the vigilantes guarding the bell tower and went right inside. Tell me, <clears throat> did you use the spell Demir to get by them? That must certainly be the case. Had she not, she surely would have been spotted. Shit. Objection! But remember what she just let slip a moment or two ago. She denied being a witch, and stated she cannot use magic. Ugh. Therefore, if that's true, then you, Miss Kira, would not have been able to use Demir at all. Objection. What a ridiculous argument. How else would this girl have been able to walk right into the bell tower unnoticed by the guards? Explain that! Objection! I have a better idea. How about we have the witness herself explain it to you? What do you say, Miss Kira? Uh, no, no, no more question. <laughs> I am not a witch. <clears throat> and I cannot use magic. So then, exactly how were you able to ascend the bell tower without being noticed? Witness, amend your testimony this instant. Okay. What is going on? There's got to be another way she got into that bell tower unseen. Unseen. <laughs> <laughs> but other than magic, I have no idea what that could be. I simply dug with my mole hands. 
Robe of Invisibility. <laughs> I assume it's a press, but I'm not even gonna try. It's a present! Robe of Invisibility! Um, objection! objection. Oh. There was, in fact, a robe dropped and left at the crime scene tonight. A robe? Miss Kira, that robe of invisibility that you mentioned earlier wouldn't happen to be this one right here, would it? How ludicrous. You are trying to tell the court that is the robe of invisibility? Whoa. It is really a robe, if it is really a robe of invi inv her invisibility, then how is it that we can see it right now? Dirty white spots and all. This is a robe of individuality. You wear it and feel <laughs> like a winner. <laughs> ah, well, she's kind of got a point there. No, she doesn't. Do you not know how robes oh, of invisibility oh. work? <laughs> oh, hey, what if the robe actually disappears when you wear it? Oh, Nick, come on. Maya shouldn't be ahead of you on this. <laughs> <laughs> Give it here, Nick. I'll prove you wrong. Watch and wonder as Maya the Magnificent disappears before your very eyes. Yes, go Finally. <laughs> oh. Da -da -da. That's kind of cute. So, are you amazed yet? Yeah, I'm amazed at how totally ridiculous you look in that. Me? Hey, what gives? This thing must be busted or something. I didn't disappear at all. Uh, well, that's not it. Probably Kira. I didn't see what she said. She just said no. No. Tonight, at the bell tower, I was wearing that robe. What did you say? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Order! <laughs> I said order. But how is that possible? The robe did not disappear at all just now. Flower stops all magic. The ultimate Dirty. magician is one who can use magic while making bread. That's because of the white powder on it. It's usually not that dirty. Oh, you mean these spots here? Please don't tell me. Oh, yeah. Packy totally unloaded an entire bag of flour under those nights, remember? Not to mention it was still raining when we were up there. The flower must have gotten nice and wet, so it stained the robe. That must feel awful to wear right now. Mm, Say, starchy. what if we try washing the flower off? Ah, there is a small- Tempering with evidence? No, there is a small water fountain at the edge of the square. Head there right now and wash this robe so that we can get to the bottom of this. Quickly now. Okay. This spell is just like, I'll do it. Runs away. God. Good for her. All right, time for a drink. Slurps up, the, right. slurps up the cloak like a spaghetti noodle. <laughs> this shouldn't be too hard. Take note, Ned, that, write it down, Lonji. <laughs> See, all you have to do is throw the rope into the water like so. Pulls it up, it's invisible. <laughs> Where'd it go? She can't find it. <laughs> oh, wait, what? So, you see anything, Maya? Th that's just it. I don't see a thing. It's disappeared. What? What a weird rule <sighs> for a magic clay. It gets dirty, you're fucked. <laughs> I frantically took a close look at the fountain and the water in the fountain, but the robe had actually vanished without a trace right there inside the fountain. I mean, it's still in your hands, right? <laughs> fountain had a trap door in the bottom. Don't make jokes, Defender. What is the meaning of this? How could you have lost such a vital piece of evidence? Your Honor- Just, just grab for it, it skim for it. What it the fuck? It wasn't on purpose. It's just like that that one gif of Oh, the... does it maybe dissolve in water? That oh. one gif of the- um. The raccoon. Oh no, yeah, yes. The raccoon with the cotton oh, candy. It's, it's, it's only invisible when it's wet because it was raining. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Your Honor, it wasn't on purpose. Trust me, I wish I knew how it happened. I can't believe it. The robe actually disappeared from sight. Um, I don't quite know what you're talking about. I can still see the robe just fine. Huh? Look. Siv looking at my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking with you. It's right here, see? No, Miss Kara, I really don't see. Because there's nothing to see. So, is that how it works? Putting the robe on makes you disappear completely from sight. 
But from the looks of it, only Kira is able to actually see the robe itself. It is not just me. It's all inhabitants of the Eldritch Woods. All of us can see the robe. The Eldritch Woods? Our village lies deep within the recesses of the forest, in a world much different from this one. That is where I live. As long as we obey the law of the land, we are allowed to live there. I knew it. There's definitely something different about Kira compared to the rest of the townspeople here. Mm. For the time being, seeing as only the witness can see the robe, we will cover it in flower again for the sake of visibility. Okay. But there's still one tiny thing bothering me. What does this say? What is this thing, man? This white sheet? It's got squiggles on it. Miss Kira, your robe was found in the middle of the floor of the bell tower, on the same floor where we find my client. Found my client. However, you were hiding on the uppermost level of the bell tower. You testified a little while ago that you dropped your robe, but I have to wonder, where exactly were you... What exactly? I am great at reading. I am Nick Wright. I am Phoenix Wright. <laughs> what exactly were you doing there on the top floor? Wow, you've really lost it. I am Defenderman. Defender. Stalling, Your Honor. I would never. It would seem there is still much we must ask this witness. What say you, High Inquisitor Dark Law? Tis the Inquisition's duty to follow my lord's decisions on such matters. I have no objections. Very well. Witness, you are hereby ordered to continue with your testimony. Tell us what happened between your sneaking up to the top floor of the bell tower and tonight's most terrible crime. E yes okay. I just forget this part is just super long. So like you're like I said, you're almost done with the game. It's just yeah. It's just this section. There's yeah. case. There's case before it. Yeah. Mm. I was waiting on the middle floor of the tower. I started to turn around, but I it was too late. They attacked me from behind. There was nothing I could do. My arm was restrained and the attacker covered my mouth. As I struggled to get away, I think I managed to pull something off of my attacker. That's when I lost consciousness. I woke up to find myself next to the bell on the top floor of the tower. Well, she pulled off the pendant then, yeah? Yeah. Witness, are you saying someone attacked you while you were in the bell tower? Yes, that is correct. But who? I don't know. They, they attacked me from behind, so I couldn't see who it was. Hmm. So you were unconscious the entire time after that? That's why I was unable to complete my mission. But even if I hadn't been unconscious, I couldn't have done anything trapped high up in the belfry like that. Oh, I wonder if that weird contraption we found up there was used to move Kira up to the belfry. At least, I can't see any other way she could have got up there. Don't ask questions. Is Danny up and about? <laughs> you no, I'm right here. Okay. Uh, you heard the witness. She was locked up on the belfry of the tower. In other words, she couldn't have had anything to do with tonight's events. Right Therefore, there is no need for this utterly useless interrogation. Objection! Not so fast. The witness also testified that someone attacked her tonight. Defender, are you implying that this attacker could have been Brazilla? I cannot say for certain, Your Honor. Regardless, the defense requests we be allowed to cross-examine this witness. No. Request granted. Now then, Defender, you may begin your interrogation. And here's where the fun begins. Let's see if we can coax this mysterious second witch out of hiding. Then, I, then. I don't know what you're talking about. We should end this case, I think. <laughs> Reason. God, the it's so like the hint coins are very forgiving. Like you would expect it to be like this is the one you need to do something on. Use another hint coin if you want us to have the evidence. So you know what uh, like I don't know. It's just it's just nice. I appreciate yeah. the quality of life. I don't play these games for the difficulty. <laughs> I play them for the story. Miss Kira, you stated that you felt yourself snap something off of your attacker. Would that thing by any chance be this right here? Oh, 
Who gave her a flower? She got her flower bag. That's it. Was she the shade picking flowers? Oh, maybe. <gasps> maybe. That's that's it. I recognize that shape. That was the object I grabbed. I think she must have been, because that's the only shade you have to interact with. Hmm. What did you say? But that's the accused pendant. The, that's, uh, the pendant is Rosella. Not quite, Your Honor. <laughs> there are actually two pendants like this. The one you see here is the counterpart to Miss Contabella's pendant. Now that you mention it, I remember. The necklace was actually very tough. It didn't really rip right, so it, it didn't come off very easily. So I struggled against it, tugging and pulling at it for a bit, and it must have scratched the neck in the process. Wait, wait a second. You mean you scratched your attacker's neck? I think so, but I don't know for sure. Nick, in that case... We can see from this angle, Maya has a giant scratch mark across her neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hmm, that's kind of weird. That means the dark stuff on the necklace could be... Yeah. Booger? <laughs> it could be the attacker's boogers. Ew. As the court can clearly see, there are still traces of boog left on the necklace itself. However... <laughs> Take one good look at my client, and you'll notice there are no visible scars or cuts of any kind around her neck. Ergo, there is no way Miss Contabella could be Miss Kira's attacker. Don't look nice at my frilly friend. neck. <laughs> <laughs> but I must stop you right there. Huh? <laughs> Someone chat Dark Law picks her nose. <laughs> it's, it's quite... Oh. It's quite dangerous to pick my nose with, with these the golems. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Have you already forgotten what I told you? The Great Witch can use any spell in existence. She would have easily healed any such wound in the blink of an eye. Uh, can't believe I'm saying this. I already miss Inquisitor Barnum. He's nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Darklaw is probably uh, Belduk's daughter, and they had like the matching necklaces or whatever because they were from their dads or some shit. Yeah. Poor Danny can't oh, react to ninety percent of the shit we get. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I you really spoil can't it. catch <laughs> a break on this one, huh, Nick? Knock. Let us resume the interrogation. Witness, continue with your testimony. Sure, here's Take the coin. I'll give you money if you tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> Ooh, a Chuck E. Cheese token. Huzzah! Okay. Arms were restrained and the attacker covered my mouth. Uh magic to Well, if she had to have her mouth covered, then she couldn't have used magic to cast spells. Um... I mean, the only one that feels like it could be relevant is this. I don't really see how this could do it. I don't think I can use another hint coin. I love how even when I'm cheating, I'm bad at this game. <laughs> It's, it Hold is. Hold on, let me see, let me see all the evidence. This is all the evidence. This... Spell of Cantabella charges being Zelly using magic to kill the town's creator. I feel like that might be. <sighs> this, this does not have anything to do with what's going on. Um, mechanism from the bell tower. I don't see how this could be relevant either. I, I feel like it, it must have been something. Her arm was restrained and the attacker covered her mouth, so she couldn't have cast either the spell, like, using her verbal or somatic components. But this is about a spella. Like, this yeah. has nothing to do with that. Mm. If her hands were restrained, how did she pull the necklace off? I guess. I mean, it says my arm was restrained, not both. Um, I'll just save scum. It's fine. Actually, who cares? I've got, I've got HP. I think it's this one, but yeah, maybe it's this. Objection. Miss Kira, there's something a little strange about your testimony just now, wouldn't you say? Huh? You stated that you were attacked from behind and that the attacker grabbed you by the wrist, correct? Y yes, that's right. 
Assuming that was, in fact, the case, then I'd say no matter how much you struggled, there's no way you would have been able to yank off this pendant, don't you think? She has two arms. Yeah, I, yeah you can just reach behind you and grab she it. She said she like covered that. her mouth and then grabbed one of her arms. She has a second arm. That's not a contradiction. Uh, I'm calling bullshit on that uh, one. The strap on this pendant is too short. There's no way you could have reached behind you and managed to pull it off. She, what if she was... I don't know, she was right there, right behind her. Like, literally right behind her. That is a good point! <laughs> Miss Kira, the only way you would have been able to yank this pendant off of your attacker is if they were standing directly in front of you. No, I can very easily imagine a situation. Just reach back with one arm and grab it! No! God. Order! Order, I say! Witness, is this true? The the nice thing about going through the Ace Attorney games, uh, the investigations ones, so like, people in the comments will be like, you're not giving these games a fair shake. And legitimately, every time I've taken some time away from them, I'm like, maybe I was too harsh. It cannot be as bad as I was remembering it. And I'm watching back the cases in real time, like, dog shit, dog shit, terrible, <laughs> all bad. Like, uh... This this game is most like this game has had one stupid moment per case though. I remember the uh the other case Danny was here for I thought was actually like the first this is well written the whole case through almost case. Yeah. There was that one thing about Leighton's arm falling in a way where it's like there's no way this could have fallen this way otherwise. It's like it yeah. absolutely there is physics, my guy. <laughs> Anyway, here's Dark Law. Oh, Danny, thank you, that's me. Fwah, I forgot. The witness was the victim of a physical attack. It's only natural that she'd be a bit confused on some of the details. Objection! Hi, Inquisitor. I wouldn't exactly call mistaking the location of your attacker being a bit confused. I'd call it more of a barefaced lie. Did that say barefaced? Did I read that correctly? Yeah. Huh, weird. I've never heard that as opposed to bald-faced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well now, Defender, I see you are as pathetically short-sighted as ever. Your argument is only valid assuming that this girl here actually saw her attacker. Uh. If she was not able to see this person, well, I'd say it'd make no difference where they were standing. Then that means shit, I, they're reading the robe? <laughs> that is impossible, my lord. As the witness already stated earlier, only residents of the Eldritch Woods are able to see these robes. In short, the attacker must have been a witch and must have disappeared from sight with the use of magic. Someone in chat, she could have also used an extendo claw. <laughs> <laughs> you must mean the great witch Mizella. There is one more thing proving the attacker to be a witch. And just what might that be? Your f sorry. The, the witness has stated that she has lost consciousness. If you take a look at the grand... Grimoire, you will notice a spell called Fainful. You seem awful familiar with that grand grimoire, Darklaw. <laughs> That's what I thought, and then I was like, I guess she is literally the High Inquisitor who prosecutes witches. She would need to know everyone. <laughs> Witness, allow me to ask you. Did you hear the incantation of the spell? I. It's really interesting how this game brings back all the culprits. Mm -hmm. Now that you mention it, I do remember hearing something like that. Say what? Is she only the High Inquisitor? I mean, obviously no, but I'm just saying that would be a good defense. <laughs> oh, is she the only High Inquisitor? Because that would be a red flag. I mean, yeah, she's in charge. That's why she's the High Inquisitor. Ah, ah here it is. Fameful. Teach me archery. <laughs> Causes those to hear the incantation to lose all consciousness. We must not forget that the Great Witch can use any and all magic at will. That's an interesting so. illustration. Witness, amend your testimony to reflect this important piece of information. Yes, right away. Oh boy, can't believe she managed to get out of that one. But still, I'm not about to give up just yet. I'll keep going. I think it literally took until this say, uh, this re this stream where I'm like, yeah, I think I'm confident in this being an actual voice and not just me going, I don't know what Nick sounds like, reading, reading. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep going until we finally get to the bottom of who this attacker really is. Now then, let us continue with the interrogation. 
do 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 Okay, what? Oh. I always forget you can even look at this. So it takes a, ah. Oh, the book of spells. Okay. So the. Objection. Miss Kira, I have watched you at that witness stand this entire trial, desperately trying to keep something hidden from the rest of the court. I wonder if you're familiar with the saying, a lie begets more lies. It means multiple lies are bound to unravel and leave your are bound to unravel and leave your story with more holes than Swiss cheese. What the hell is Swiss cheese? What is a Swiss? <laughs> Get to the point, defender. According to the Grand Grimoire, Fainfall <laughs> I can't stop hearing it as Fainfall. Fainfall causes a person to lose all consciousness. It's written here in black and white. Its effect takes hold the second the incantation is heard. Uh. Miss Kira, you testified as follows. You heard the incantation for Fainfall and immediately became aware of the presence of your attacker. You then put up a fight. But if you really did hear that incantation, there's no way you would have been able to yank that pendant from your assailant. Uh. <laughs> Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that Miss Kira didn't actually hear the incantation like she claims she did. But then, why? Why on earth was this girl unconscious? Anemia. A bonk on my head! <laughs> I get a bonk -a She got, ah. Uh, there is one other spell, a bonker. <laughs> it gives you a little bonk <laughs> on the head. Kira Just a little lump. Kira was definitely I not. I have been... I have been a bonkered on both sides of my head as I wear these little cat ears <laughs> to cover up my lumps. The Great Witch is the only person who's managed to survive two Abonka spells. That means Kira was definitely knocked out by whoever attacked her. And whenever she woke up, she found herself up on... Hang on, I'm getting a little uh, feedback. Getting some bleed. Wah! Okay, I think it's gone. Daddy! Huh? I'm here. What the yeah. heck? The, I think Ooh. I could hear Hello? myself... A little bit. I can hear him too. What happened? What the hell? Yeah, we're we're hearing a little bit of us through your audio. No. Is this is it gone? Wah ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Maybe. Ba 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 ba. We'll see. Uh. That's You're still weird. lighting up, but we'll check. And when she first woke up, she found herself up on the top floor of the bell tower. I mean, I can't hear it anymore. I can't hear it anymore. That was weird. If Sorry. It, it's possible Miss Kira was rendered unconscious by. I don't care. Inkling. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Choose. Thanks, hint. Um. Sleepy flower. I mean, probably just something other than magic, right? Just got fucking hit. The answer here is obvious. Something other than magic must have knocked her out. And what, may I ask, makes you so certain of that? Is it not possible that another spell could have been used? Objection! I don't know. That's just not possible. You of all people hey, should know that. I'm sorry, do you mind if I rejoin? Because it's like really going slow for me. Sure, go for it. Yep. Sorry, I don't know. It's also interesting to see that Dark Law has those two little horns coming off of her head when that witch that we met in the forest also had like the big horns. I mean, yeah, I think that's on purpose. Okay. Miss Kira's claim... Wah, 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 wah. Just checking if I can hear you. Wah, 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 wah. Miss Kira's claim that she heard someone say the incantation is completely false. Even so, this is a lovely book. What yeah. I wouldn't give to cast a few spells. That wouldn't be too much of a problem if she actually heard an incantation. That... that's right. However, going by her testimony, that can't have been the case. The only spell capable of making someone lose consciousness is Fainfall. Isn't that right, High Inquisitor Darklaw? Uh, Defender, are you claiming there is another way besides magic that could have been used to render Miss Kira unconscious? Abonka, there is only one other thing that crossed my mind. I'm speaking, of course, about sleeping medicine. Sleeping medicine? If you remember, oh. Miss Kira stated that the attacker covered her mouth before she could scream. 
In doing that, the attacker was able to administer a potent sleep medicine. Thus put, that's why they were wearing the gas masks before. And putting Miss yep. Kira out like a light. Mm, indeed, that does make sense. There, we just gave her so much Benadryl, says someone in chat. <laughs> Therefore, Your Honor, the attacker did not necessarily have to be Bazella. There's all them flowers she'd be sniffing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's what that juice was they were making in the, uh, in the hut. I mean, oh, yeah. why would an all-powerful being capable of commanding any and all magic need to resort to drugging someone? Hold it right there, Defender. They managed to sneak past the guards and make their way up to the bell tower. Clearly, they must have used magic to appear invisible. Objection! You don't need to make magic to make a mac a mac a mac a bonk a high inquisitor. The defense rests. Throw this on and... <laughs> Throw this on and getting past those guards at the tower is a piece of cake. The robe of invisibility. But despite all that, there's still one glaring problem. Miss Kira. Hmm. You admitted to the you admitted to the court earlier that you were attacked from the front, correct? If that's the case, then there's only one possible conclusion we can draw. You, Miss Kira, were entirely capable of seeing your attacker's face. Why is that? It's simple. You even said it yourself. Only residents of the Eldwitch Woods are able to see this robe. That means, Miss Kira, there is a piece of this puzzle only you could possibly know. Only you can tell us the identity of the person who entered the bell tower and attacked you tonight. Don't say it, bitch. Doc. <laughs> hmm. Um, I can't tell you. No matter what happens, I just can't tell you no matter what. Uh-oh. Case closed. <laughs> well, let's go home. You see, everyone, this witness has been covering up for someone from the very start of this trial. What? But luckily for us, we won't be needing any more of Miss Kira's testimony. Because the answer is staring us right in the face. I'm speaking, of course, about the true identity of Miss Kira's attacker. All the clues so far point to this one person. Defender, I take it you are prepared to prove such a serious accusation. No, I am. <laughs> all right. It looks like it all comes down to this. Now we'll finally see who's been pulling the strings this whole time. That's cute. Very well, Defender. Tell the court. Who was the one you, responsible for attacking me? <laughs> what? I love that. She, Yay! I love that she's an option. <laughs> like the, oh, it's so cute. I mean, it's Dark Claw, right? Yeah. 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 The answer is obvious, Your Honor. It was you, High Inquisitor Dark Law. Wh what? What? Rabble, 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 rabble. Rabble, 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 rabble. Oh my god. <laughs> Someone chat. It was you. Puss in boots. Order, order, order in the court. Inconceivable. <laughs> There's no way. I must say, Defender. What's wrong? Is something injuring on your neck? Do you have a cut for some neck reason? Okay? <laughs> your courage is impressive, however reckless you may be. Accusing a High Inquisitor is no small feat, I assure you. Did someone However, say small feat? <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> so not yet! Sorry. However, with serious accu accusations come serious consequences. One small misstep, and I will personally see that you never set foot in this courtroom ever again. Mark my words, Defender. That is a meaningless this threat. Courtroom, there's like a billion real ones in the real world. That's a meaningless threat as your intention in this trial is to make this the last witch trial. So either way, I will never stand court in here again. <laughs> I understand. My, how confident. Also, we're outside, so this isn't a courtroom anyone will ever stand in again. Ooh. I'm just saying your threat is really hollow. Try again. <laughs> Let us see if that confidence of yours is well justified. It is. Your threat sucks. <laughs> Miss Kira's attacker. <laughs> Miss Kira's attacker drugged her with sleep medicine. It's, it likely took no more than a few seconds for her to lose consciousness. 
The medicine must have been very potent. Hmm, true. After all, its effects appear somewhat similar to magic. There's only one person I can think of in all Labyrinthia who could supply you with that kind of medicine. Sir Newton Belduke. Ooh. Leave my daddy out of this. Defender, you are aware that Sir Belduke has been deceased for over three months now, are you not? That's a fact I'm well aware of, believe me. While he was still alive, Sir Belduke provided the citizens of this town with a variety of medicines for whatever ailed them. But it wasn't all just medicine. He also created some very dangerous concoctions. That's why, after he passed away, all of his medicines and creations were confiscated. Confiscated? Inquisitor Barnum said as much in the last witch trial. Remember me being a character? The victim was an alchemist, after all. We were hoping the items confiscated from his study could provide some clues. Besides, such things must not fall into the wrong hands. It may not be standard practice, but it was deemed necessary. The confiscated goods are stored in our secret vault. The only, the only person with access to them is the High Inquisitor, Lady Darklaw. The only peasant? <laughs> ah... So, because I have access to the medicine, I must be the one that used it. Is that what you're getting at, Defender? Yes! <laughs> yes! Unfortunately for you, I could hardly call that proof. You said it yourself. Sir Beldu concocted a plethora of dangerous medicine uh, in his efforts to assist the people of this town. He was well known for this fact, a fact that he no doubt was none too pleased with. As such, it is highly likely that those same dangerous substances are still scattered throughout the town. Not really. Oh, sorry. And therefore... Some, sometimes it what? double taps for no reason. Hmm, indeed. You are right. We all heard you. Long has Sir Belduke's medicine played an active part in maintaining the health of this town's citizens. What a dick the storyteller must be to be like... Oh, the random goat lady gets really sick this week. <laughs> Just like, why? <laughs> there is plenty of reason to believe some of his more dangerous medicines still remain within Labyrinthia. Hmm. A piece of advice, Defender. If next time you speak in court, I recommend you try pro procuring some real evidence before spouting such idiotic accusations. If you fail to do so, your next words will be uttered to the flames. Figures. I knew she wouldn't. I knew she wouldn't take that argument sitting down. Both High Inquisitor Darklaw and Inquisitor Barnum are the very harbingers of justice within Labyrinthia. You know he was just just taken in for prison or for treason, right? Raising such an <laughs> accusation against either one of them without valid reason will result in the most severe of punishments. What does he mean by the most severe of punishments? I think the yes. judge is saying that if I don't start making a case. We're going to start paying Sir Belduke a visit real soon. I need to present some decisive evidence, and fast. I'm pretty sure I would be able to... I'm pretty sure I should be able to do that much. I'll keep throwing my Chuck E. Cheese tokens at them. High Inquisitor Darklaw <laughs> is the attacker. And the one thing that proves it is... I mean, it's Darklaw herself, right? Because she would have the, uh... She would have the cut on her neck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The defendant believes there's one clue here linking High Inquisitor Darklaw to the crime. High Inquisitor! That clue is actually still on you right now. Oh, people have a, a terrible habit of incriminating themselves. Ah, ooh, my neck. That, that was such a good joke. Aram's so funny. <laughs> I must admit, I do not know where you are going with this defender, but please point out the clue to the court. Ah, the most devious witch spell of all. The one that makes the point out sessions fucking impossible. Even if you pick the exact right spot. I, okay. So, Siv, you know how mad I got in, yes. in yes. the earlier case where it was just like dead ass exactly the spot? Uh, in yes. case three, I did that again even worse. Like, I literally oh, can't no. even see what I did wrong. And I was just like, I don't understand. I hate this so much. Show us the clue. You're pretty. Oh, thank you. I know it's her neck, yeah. but like, I literally don't trust it, so. Gosh. Yeah, so it's finicky when you have to point it out, because it, it's very touchy, and I hated that. Yeah, I, I clipped it, but the, um, 
in the case where, in the original case with Kira, where it's like, where did she light the fire from? Where was the witch? And it's like, well, she was within one meter, so she's next to the guys, right? I clicked it and it was like, that's not it, fine. Used the hit coin, exactly the spot I clicked. Like, completely within the lit circle. And I was like, um, all right. The, the High Inquisitor's neck. You don't mean... Defender, you are accused of being a vampire. Away with him. What? Wait, what? What? No! No! I didn't know Nick was a vampire! Oh! Miss Kira yanked this pendant off her attacker's neck. God, can you... Like, can you Ooh. fucking imagine how hard that yank must have been to, like, gash the neck? Fuck. Well, that much blood? Yeah, you're like, what is that ribbon made out of? Or the, the it's string? A, it's a bladed string. Take a look at the <laughs> necklace. It's a garrote. It still has a bit of blood left on it. I guess garrotes aren't Bro, even me. if this were normal times, we could just use evidence on it. Like, we could do, like, <laughs> fucking DNA shit, like... Yeah. According to her earlier testimony, when Miss Kira pulled at the necklace, she supposedly felt herself scratch the attacker's neck. Oh, she scratched it. Okay, it wasn't... It wasn't her oh, okay. searing, <laughs> severing it with the necklace. Is that correct, Miss Kira? Yeah, I got that, bitch. Therefore, <laughs> that bitch should still have a mark on their neck from being scratched. Oh... Would you mind letting the court take a look at your neck, High Inquisitor Darklaw? It's that thing connecting your head to your body! Unless, of course, you were able to get rid of it with magic. Don't bloody touch me. Don't bloody touch you? Bloody, you say? <laughs> Most impressive. What? I have to say, Defender, you've managed to finally hone that dull blade of yours into something useful. You are correct. There is, in fact, a mark on my neck that I did receive tonight. What? A hickey? Lady Darklaw! What is the meaning of this? Does that mean Lady Darklaw's the Great Witch? All of all of my favorite Ace Attorney games are the one where the final boss is a girl. That not because of that, but that just happens to be the case. I can't even say which games those are. <laughs> oh, I know without spoiling it, but ugh. I mean I know you know, Danny. Yeah, because I'm like, you're right. It's really great. Your honor. Uh, oh! Yes, I see you're still here, Defender. Your Honor. I know you're shocked and everything, but come on, work with me here. <laughs> your, your Honor, the defense would like to call High Inquisitor Darklaw to the witness stand. Uh, what did I'm you sorry, just I say? Just got this fucking comment in chat. Phoenix, why does your hair look like Fatalis? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's, it's a monster hunter monster. Ah, it's quite clear that the High Inquisitor has some connection to what transpired tonight. And what's more... There's a chance she used her position of authority as High Inquisitor to frame my client as the Great Witch. I mean, she, does she actually have the cut on her neck, though? But never in all my years as judge of this court has an Inquisitor been asked to take the stand in the middle of a trial. It's been a weird week, though, hasn't it? We're going to... <laughs> Real weird. Well, well, we're going to have to make some history here if we're going to find the truth, Your Honor. Uh, even so... This trial cannot continue any further without an Inquisitor. I'm an Inquisitor! Hey. Look at my hat! Wow! In, in that case, how about you get Inquisitor Bird? Please bring the dog in. Uh, woof. <laughs> Inquisitor Barnum remains incarcerated in the underground dungeons for the crime of treason against the storyteller. I don't think he will be able to make it to this party. Most regrettable, Defender. Dots. Sounds like somebody needs to stand and point. This whole thing is hopeless. Unless High Inquisitor Darklaw takes oh God, to the witness moving? stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spell it will be done for. And the truth along with her. But on the other hand, without an Inquisitor on the other side, the trial can't continue, and the outcome would end up the same. What should I do? I'm Professor Latum. Luke, you are now the Inquisitor. Oh, thank God. I believe I can fill that role. Professor, wait, what are you saying? I can prove conclusively that Espella Cantabella 
is, in fact, the great witch Bazella. This is fun. <gasps> Now, Mr. Wright, the time has come at last to settle this once and for all. Mm. We'll be able to use this in the trailers. We've been waiting for the professor to show up. If there was anyone who could find some decisive evidence to win this thing, it was him. However, he ended up standing behind the Inquisitor's bench. The professor wasn't on our side here. I had to wonder what the heck was going to happen. Oh, no. That's fun. The ver the verses. It was correct. Oh, uh, give me two seconds. Okay. <gasps> Alucardo, you having a bath? That's actually no. really good timing on this save point. Uh, let's maybe take like a three minute. Oh fuck! It just goes, doesn't it? Well, just I'll click off the window. That doesn't stop it. This is a good emulator. Ah, Professor. I'll just leave it here. But what are you doing? Let's take like a two I mean, minute break. Me, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, this would be a good time to grab water and stuff. Um Yay. I need to Thank I need to send a headshot to somebody for something. Okay.
bum ba dum bum bum ba dum ba da da dum bum I am back. Is anyone else here? Yes. I was brum bum bumming with you as Luke, but I was muted. I just imagine them both like sidestepping into into the court like da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh two more seconds and then I will headshot. I'm making some um hot chocolate in the back, so I'll have to run out to grab that in like three or four minutes, but Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, would one of you mind taking over the judge? Because I can. I don't want to do all three of them. I'll be the hoobity do man. All right, Professor. What am I doing, Mr. Wright? Oh, hello. Yeah, you were supposed to show up with some decisive evidence and save the day, Professor. I'm afraid my only concern here is the truth. Because I'm a good person and not a lawyer. <laughs> the truth? Mm. The truth behind the real identity of the great witch, Espella Cantabella. If seeking the truth requires us to stand on opposite sides of the courtroom, then so be it. <laughs> That's an interesting I way to read to that. Defend Miss Cantabella with everything you've got, Mr. Wright. Court is now back in session. Do, do, do. Turn that back down. And I think just because, again, this is the finale, we've been going for two hours. I'm going to screen cap that and let people know once again that we are here in case they stepped Yeet. away. Yeet. Quote tweet. We're the finale of late. of the witch truck starring spec spec and skinny <gasps> hey hey that's me hey <laughs> hey my god guys <laughs> sorry what <laughs> yeah, oh my god guys okay <laughs> i heard i'm a card game <laughs> like <what? laughs> I'm gonna grab my hot chocolate. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I just got, are you prepared? Yeah, here you can do judge until sub tags in. Okay. Are you prepared, High Inquisitor? So long as I remain on the witness stand, I am no longer High Inquisitor. I am no longer High Inquisitor. Simply Dark Law will suffice. Miss Dark Law, I'd just like to confirm something. A moment ago, we established that you were in fact present at the bell tower during the time of the incident. That makes a total of three people at the scene. It would appear that was the case. However, you managed to stay hidden from ten different guards with the help of this right here. The robe of invisibility. In other words, there is every reason to be suspicious of your actions tonight. Lady Darklaw, while I cannot believe you would deceive us in such a way, I ask that you tell the court what happened at the time of the incident. No. <laughs> right? No. The town square was to be the, the parade's final stop. I patrolled the perimeter to ensure nothing was amiss. As I passed by the bell tower, a pair of small footprints leading inside caught my eye. I went to inside to investigate. I had, to, I had my own reasons for not allowing any one of those vigilantes see me. I climbed the stairs of the bell tower and saw an intruder inside, and then their back turned. I proceeded to apprehend them. You apprehended the intruder? While I hold the position of High Inquisitor, there are often times when I must partake in various secret tasks, unbeknownst to the citizens of Labyr Labyrinthia. One of those tasks being ensuring the security of the storyteller. Security? As such, there is nothing odd nor suspicious about my actions tonight. Okay, innocent. <laughs> I see. Defender, you may now begin your interrogation. Layton. <laughs> you need to say Layton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hint coins. Hint coins, hint coins, press. Her icon is really cute. And what were those yeah. reasons? 
They were there to protect the storyteller. It was something I was to carry out at that particular time. Did it perhaps have something to do with what was already decided upon in the story? The storyteller's word is absolute. Therefore, any and all those who make an attempt to alter this will must be dealt with immediately. Someone in chat, hey, stop spending my hint coins. <laughs> you you all right there? You got a pee, Kira? Hang on. <laughs> She's like, hmm. Excuse me, Miss Kira. Witness. <laughs> yes. Figures, she really doesn't remember her own name. You seem to be in deep thought about something. Did you remember anything regarding the High Inquisitor's testimony? Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Nothing in particular. It's just... I'm a little disappointed in myself. Disappointed? I traveled all the way here to Labyrinthia in order to fulfill my mission, but... All I managed to do was fail... was fail and end up something. Being captured. Getting Sorry. captured. The uh, the ultimate the ultimate game of being the host of one of these is trying to figure out the the right time to cut through on the next text box and be like, how slow is Discord in showing my friends these words? Mm. Very slow. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of your own failure, Miss Kira, did uh, the storyteller did die as foretold? Did he not? Save your back, right? No, apparently. Oh. Tonight, as the rain came pouring down over the town, I arrived at my designated location. Naturally, the bell tower was surrounded by guards on patrol. Ten to be exact. I was very generous. She must be talking about the vigilantes. Just relax. You'll be fine, so as long as you're wearing this robe, I kept telling myself. Little did I know I was wrong. But none of this would have happened if I was just a bit more careful. Save, are you actually back now? Sure am. Welcome back. Enough. I would be thinking more about atoning for your past crimes and less about what, have, what could have been if I were you. Is there anything wrong with Kira's testimony? Thanks, Hintcoin. <laughs> Hold on one second. About your testimony, Miss Kira. You were thinking to yourself that so long as you had your robe on, you would be fine. I was, uh, am I picking her back? Yeah, you're still her. I I think Dark Law or uh I think Danny's gonna be Dark Law and Aspella. Okay. It, yes, that's right, I was. So basically, you were wearing the robe the whole time you were up on the top floor of the bell tower, is that right? E yes, I had it on the entire time. That is until I was attacked. Then my robe was ripped off by the wind. Miss Kira, really? <laughs> Miss Kira, this is the first time we've heard any mention of this information. Is that so? I think I must have just forgotten. Your Honor, perhaps we should update this piece of evidence in the court record. Right you are. Lady Darklaw, please continue your testimony. Oh, she angry now. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Hinkoin. What? Oh. Ooh, tricky. It stopped the music after I presented. That's mean. <laughs> trying to trying to fuck over save scummers, I see. <laughs> Sweats. So, the person you saw when you entered the bell tower was actually Miss Kira. The only problem with that is how would the, uh, is that it would have been impossible. Dots. What are you talking about, Defender? Miss Kira, uh, or should I say, the witness, stated that while she was waiting on the upper floor of the tower, she was wearing her invisibility robe. Therefore, there is no way Miss Darklaw would have been able to see the witness. Oh, you're, you're quite right. Anyone wearing this robe becomes invisible. Right, but... There's just one particular group that can see anyone dressed in this robe. Uh, and who is that exactly? Only residents of the Eldwitch Woods are able to see the robe. If you're from the Eldwitch Woods, then you'll have absolutely no problem seeing this thing. Objection. Objection. So, what you are saying, Mr. Wright, 
is that Miss Darklaw here actually hails from the Eldritch Woods. Is that correct? And that she knew this girl prior to tonight. That's right, Professor. What is this? Nani? <laughs> someone, uh, someone in chat, that music change actually got me for like a full 30 minutes while cheating. <laughs> I, I, I've been there. I don't remember which game it was, but one of them did that to me. A most impressive display, Mr. Wright. However, there is one detail that you appear to have overlooked. Something I overlooked? Oh, shit, he's so much smarter than me. You say Miss Darklaw saw something she should not have been able to see. However, the truth is that there is one other possibility as to what occurred tonight. <laughs> did he just say what I think he said? It's rather easy to work out. Quite simply, the witness was not wearing the robe in the first place. What are you talking about, Inquisitor? This witness has proven her memory of tonight's events to be quite unreliable. I believe that by the time she climbed the bell tower, she had, in fact, already removed her robe. What? It is as you say, Inquisitor. Uh, shit! As you can see, Defender, your, ass your assertion is mere speculation at best. Man, I hate I hate being the worst, but that pose at that angle is just like, man, she pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Your little witness has been lying to you court to the court this entire time. It's as simple as that. <laughs> One second. The witness was quite clear on her testimony. Isn't that right, Miss Kira? Uh, I'm not sure. Fuck, come on. I mean my my memory's a little fuzzy. Go away! Be nice to Feeny! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I forgot I was the old man. It would appear there's nothing more to be gained from this line of questioning. You know, there's a lot of jokes that I could have been making this whole run through since one of Nick's nicknames is actually Feeny, and I've just wasted that opportunity, I'm afraid. Your Honor, hmm. I suggest we return to the cross-examination. A fine idea, Inquisitor. Well then, Lady Darklaw, will you please continue with your testimony? No. As you wish. No, no. matter how you slice it, Kira looks like she's definitely hiding something. Hmm, if only there was some way of getting her to talk, huh, Nick? No matter what Kira says, Darklaw just stays cool and brushes it off. Yeah, this isn't gonna be easy, yeah. that's for sure. That's why we really need to set our sights on Darklaw. If we keep doing that, then sooner or later, Kira is bound to speak up and say something. Whoa, Nick, that's your most dastardly, devious plan yet. All right, I know there's still a clue or two in this testimony somewhere, and I'm gonna find it. I should go back and throw hint coins at them. Good plan. Take my money. <laughs> Pay to win. There you go. <laughs> I can't believe they added loot boxes to Ace Attorney 7. Oh my god. Oh, that's the end of it. <laughs> this is a long read through. Yo, new, new lawyers just dropped in the <laughs> I just patch. read that. Those must have been Miss Kira's footsteps from when she snuck into the bell tower, right? Indeed. The ground outside was quite muddy after the rain, so her footprints pins were easily visible. <laughs> right. <Footings>. Footies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that. I, I don't remember if this came up the last time we were hanging out with Danny. Uh, we have a long-term running thing where anytime the word bloodstain or fingerprints appears, we call them bloodies and uh, fingies. So, I feel like to follow that pattern, if the word footprints comes up, we gotta call it footies. Like, footy pajamas. Footies. Okay. Footies. Right. It's funny. According to the vigil- Oh, we just got to that, too. That's gonna show up finally in this next video, Siv. And oh, I good, good. I didn't really- it's, it's Will who coined fingies, actually. Oh! <laughs> right. According to the vigilante's testimony- Oh, Hello. yeah. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sip sweats. <laughs> they thought the footprints looked like Foxy's. Oh, sorry. They thought the footies looked like Foxy's, but it turned out they weren't hers. 
That's right. Her footies would have been contained to mark where her stiletto had been. But the footies I saw at the bell tower contained no heel mark at all. And you stepped inside those footies on your way up the stairs so as not to leave your own and risk being detected, correct? Exactly. At that time, my main task was to ensure the safety of the town square. In doing so, it was of the utmost importance that no one knew of my presence there. Had the townspeople noticed your presence there, it would have undoubtedly raised some suspicion. Indeed. So naturally, that is why I did not wish to be noticed by the vigilantes. Therefore, it was imperative that I may ask that I mask any traces of my being there, even if it meant utilizing another footsies. Footsies! I see. <laughs> I missed that. I'm sure it was funny, though. A clever tactic worthy of the High Inquisitor herself. Is there anything off about that testimony just now? Yeah, the coins tell all. Reaper, creeper. <laughs> Miss Darklaw, I just noticed something in your testimony that's very relevant to the case. The defense requests you amend your testimony. Whatever. Yeah, I know the sass on her. You can't just help letting that ridiculous imagination of yours run wild, can you? I wish I had an imagination. The Inquisition has no objections. <laughs> very well. The witness will amend her testimony. Knock! Man, I, I love those horn things. I'm, I'm giving those to the Winds of Change main character. They're just so fun and cute. <laughs> They're good. It, they are. Eh. Objection. Footy sketch. <laughs> what I have here is a sketch of the foot. Should it be footies or footsies? <laughs> If it's one footprint, then it would be footy. And if it's multiple, then it's footsies. All right, yeah, let's add extra challenge. We got this. What I have here is the sketch of the footsies left at the bell tower. So tell me, Miss Darklaw, are these your footsies in this sketch? I, wow, I hate saying that. <laughs> it would appear so. I would never mean to offend the hard work of Labyrinthian's vigilantes, but... Tonight's task was mine and mine alone. Hmm. Okay. When you put it that way, I can't help but notice a contradiction. What? What did you say? Miss Darklaw, you stated the following. When you climbed the stairs, the footprints had no heel, so you tried to match your footsteps ah. to them as far as, as far as possible. As far as possible. However, if you look at the actual footprints that were left behind, you can clearly see that not only is the heel present, but so is the entire foot. If you were trying so hard to step on the footsies already... <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> I'll get used to it. If you were trying so hard to step on the footsies already th already there, then the footsies in this sketch shouldn't have any heel marks. Hmm. That is very true. Although I do not think such a small detail is of much importance in the long run. You're right! Someone else says Anya from Spy X Family has horns too. Yeah, no, that's that's one of the other... I, I love those weird horns. They're so cute. <laughs> there, there was something... Everyone should read Spy X Family, by the way. It's the best. There was something very telling about Miss Darklaw's testimony. Telling, you say? She stated that she stepped on the footies that were already at the scene in order to disguise her presence. Now, there's something strange there. Specifically, why were these footies, footsies, left at the crime scene in the first place? Objection. Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Professor? Tell me, can you show the court why this seemingly minor detail is odd? I, I can't exactly do that at the moment. Who can say whether or not these footprints are indeed worthy of concern? Ah. What? Whoa. Hey. Oh, are you yelling at your cat? Okay. No, I'm yelling at you. You messed it up. Sorry. Leighton has no time for... God, that was so loud and sharp. It wasn't even like a hey. It was just an ah! <laughs> oh, sorry. And if it is an issue, then what exactly are the implications? That, above all, is what you must answer, Mr. Wright. I do not believe you can assert that this is a blatant contradiction at this time. Oh, there he goes again, flexing that amazing brain of his. <sighs> He's so cool and handsome. <laughs> I'm here. That's enough. Uh, Miss Kira? Lady Darklaw, how... how could you... 
How could you simply abandon us? How could you betray us? She's had enough! <laughs> betray? Witness, what is the meaning of this? Lady Darklaw, you are... You are the mistress of Eldritch Woods. You're the one responsible for handing us our tasks. What? Snitches get stitches, you witch bitch. Oh, she's got a little braid in the back? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's you see that right on the right tip of her little horn thing? That's where the yeah. braid Yeah. Oh really my god. <laughs> Sip twirls hair. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you, Darklaw? Six foot two with horns. You're so funny. Six foot two with horns and footies? <laughs> um, this wretched girl is nothing more than a detestable spawn of magic. Her words cannot be taken seriously. The fucking, the list of things that always charm me. Just the, a little kiss joke and oh my god. Six foot five. Yeah. <laughs> People of Labyrinthia, I ask you. What am I, if not a loyal daughter of this fair town? No, you're lying, Lady Darklaw. When I was waiting up there at the top of the bell tower, I was most certainly wearing that robe. <laughs> Lady Darklaw, you... You were also wearing a similar robe, were you not? Don't you remember? Hm. what nonsense. I haven't a clue what you're babbling about. I simply managed to sneak by those makeshift guards was not the most demanding of tasks for someone like me. Yes, you're right. That would be true. If you'd been sneaking around by yourself. Oh? I, by yourself? What I do you mean by this? I swear I am not tapping more than once. Sometimes it just eats a double input. <laughs> it, it does, and it's stupid. Enough. Listen to me and listen well. Continue as you are, and I, see, I will see to it that this court be the last place you ever set foot. Footies, it matters not. <laughs> the end is already nigh. After the events of today, I shouldn't even be here right now. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry. Um, Miss Kira, you're saying that Miss Darklaw was not by herself at the time of the incident tonight. That's right. Cool. Ooh. I like your shoe. I like your boots, Darklaw. Ooh. Oh my Ooh, god, Darklaw. Darklaw wearing the invisibility robe, and underneath that robe was a young girl passed out on her back. Uh, what? A, a girl? Could that be? Yes. It was the very same girl imprisoned inside that cage up there. Oh you, my You god. need. Oh my god. Spell a cantabella! I'm so sad. She's so yeah. Order! Order! So the accused was carried up the bell tower. Do you, do you want me to tag back in as the judge? Leighton isn't talking nearly as much as I was worried yeah. he would be. <laughs> yeah. Me lord, there's I nothing mean, left. Leighton literally just showed up and went, you can, you know what, you'll... You'll crumble by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Tis the word of the High Inquisitor versus that of a witch. But tell me, who would you sooner believe? High Inquisitor, have you ever heard of corruption? Objection. Objection. High Inquisitor, have you ever heard of corruption? Miss Darklaw, have you ever heard of corruption? <laughs> <laughs> you <would> just... <laughs> Tony Lazuno! <laughs> Tony Lazuno! <laughs> God, that video is so fucking funny. <laughs> That this isn't a matter of believing or not believing. I'm afraid those are words that carry no meaning here. The only thing that carries any meaning here within the courtroom is evidence. Don't you agree, Mr. Wright? Yes, absolutely, Professor. Well, now. Things are beginning to heat up a little, are they not? Fine. Tell me, Defender. Have you the means to prove this assertion? Do you actually think you can prove that I, the High Inquisitor of Labyrinthia, carried the accused into the bell tower? No. From the looks of it, Miss Kira was supposed to keep quiet about Darklaw's little secret. But she couldn't deal with all of Darklaw's denials and finally found the guts to chime in. I can't let Kira's effort go to waste. I don't care what stands in my way. I'm going to find the truth. Your Honor, the defense wishes, wishes to present evidence proving that Miss Darklaw did, in fact, carry my client up the tower. Very well, Defender. You may present Eve your evidence. Eve was on her shoulders! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
Let us show the evidence that proves Lady Darklaw carried the accused up the bell tower. Give me just a second. Put this. Keycoin. Um, is it just the footprints again somehow? I actually don't know. Uh, yeah, it is because they needed both of the things to, um, both of the pendants. So it might be the sketch, the, the sketch of the tower itself. I think you're thinking ahead. Yeah, you're probably right. Take that! There was something in your testimony just now that I'm not buying. And that's the... <laughs> and that's the feetsies that were left at the bell tower. <laughs> Did I not just finish admitting that those were my footsies? Miss Darklaw, you stated the following. There was no heel on the feetsies so much as I as so as I ascended the stairs, I was careful to match my footprints to them as far as possible. However, the reality is, the feetsies pictured in the sketch actually do contain a heel. That means something must have prevented you from being able to tiptoe along the footsies that were already there. Prevented? Ah! You mean... That's right, Your Honor. Miss Darklaw, when you climbed the bell tower tonight, you must have been carrying Miss Contabella on your back. Is that correct? <laughs> if you remember, it rained quite heavily tonight. That means the stairs must have been quite slippery. With your hands occupied carrying the client, there would be no way for you to tiptoe up the stairs without falling. That right there is the truth behind the feetsies on the staircase! Come, come on. Please. Again, I don't really think that needed to be a contradiction. That could have just been dialogue, but whatever. <laughs> Lady Darklaw, you... Yeah. Fine. I admit it. <clears throat> it is as you say. I donned the robe and made my way up the tower. But I was not alone. I carried both Espella Cantabella and her little friend up the tower with me. Little friend? That black furred cat of her creature of hers. You don't, do you not know what a cat is? That's yeah, a strange like, mammalian you? creature. <laughs> Good thing is Mary never a second from her side. Oh, uh, she must mean Eve. When I arrived at the top of the tower, I saw this girl already there and called out to her. I was very shocked I... to see the mistress shown up. Oh, sorry. I was very shocked to see the mistress show up in person like that. The girl's presence was an inconvenience, so I immediately put her to sleep. Believe it or not, it's just like you said, Defender. I used what remained of Belle Duke's medicine to put the girl out of the picture. And that's when Miss Kira put up a fight and pulled this pendant right off of your neck, correct? That's right. <clears throat> I'm not following any of this. I cannot fathom it. That would mean this pendant actually belongs to you, Lady Darklaw? Dots. I just have one question, Miss Darklaw. Why? Why take Espella up the bell tower? Why render her unconscious? And why go through the trouble well, of sneaking past the guards? What exactly was your- in towers, do they not? That's true. What exactly was your aim in all of this? I am in no way obliged to answer that question, Defender. You are obliged because perjury. <laughs> what? <laughs> what makes you say that? Simple. None of this has any relevance to the case at hand. That is why. I literally don't know how you could possibly argue that at this point. <laughs> I carried the defendant up to the crime scene, lied about being there multiple times, and lied about not seeing this witness. This has nothing to do with the case. Yes, this made me so frustrated. I'm like, what? Miss Darklaw, you rendered the witness unconscious and locked her at the top of the bell tower. I'd say that's more than a little relevant. No. Your Honor, Phoenix, if now. I'm... Not now, if I may. The Inquisition believes the defense's question to be irrelevant to the current case. Professor, what are you saying? I don't know, man. I'm just... I don't vibing. know. <laughs> I don't know. Looks like he's just meditating. It would seem the defense um. has forgotten a very important point. <laughs> Namely, the point of this, Mr. Wright. Huh? The aim of this trial is to find the identity of the Great Witch Bazella, 
Whether or not Miss Darklaw locked the witness at the top of the bell tower is hardly relevant to the purpose of this trial. I mean, but... There is one thing that... Uh, yes, there is one thing that is very clear. Neither Miss Darklaw nor this witness could possibly be Bezella. What? If either one of these two were Bezella, then there would be no need for them to have used this robe of invisibility. They cannot use any magic. Therefore, it is inconceivable that either of them could be the Great Witch. A rather straightforward argument, if ever there was one. At the time of the incident, there were three people present. Of those three, two used the robe of invisibility from that to vanish from sight, leaving only one. She was under the robe! <laughs> we just saw it! <laughs> Miss Contabella. Ugh. With this in mind, the larger question is who is Bazella? Is that not obvious? The accused, Espella Cantabella, is the only possible answer. Besides, the accused voice was heard by all the townspeople chanting the Grand... Grand Worm? Yeah. Grand Worm. I love how they're like, well, they heard it. The the audio things these people have heard and misheard have been frankly fucking insane in this yes. game. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Not so fast. I happen to think these witnesses are extremely relevant to this trial. Did you forget about Miss Kira? She supposedly took a one-way trip into that pit of fire over there, and yet here she is in one piece testifying that she returned in order to kill the ruler of Labyrinthia, the storyteller. Then there's Miss Darklaw, who rendered the defendant unconscious and proceeded to transport her up the bell tower. I'd say there's more than enough reason to investigate who these two really are, only to discover that they are not, in fact, the Great Witch Bazella. I'm saying there's a possibility that these two are somehow related to Bazella. Everyone shut up. The court will now announce its thoughts <laughs> on the matter. I must say, what Inquisitor Layton has stated certainly does ring true. Tip. This is for eating all my hint coins, right? I reached my arm to the moon to grab those, and you throw them away like they are pennies at the duck pond. Who throws ducks pennies? You know what I mean. However, Lee. <laughs> Stupid <Wow>. bits. <laughs> However, Lady Darklaw, I wanted to just like ramp off of that, but I actually forgot what the judge's voice was for a second. I have one question I may ask you. What exactly were you hoping to accomplish here tonight? I assure you, it was not my intent to deceive the good citizens of Labyrinthia. However, I must now reveal the truth to you all. What did she say? You don't think Lady Darklaw's in league with the witches, do you? Well, she can't be. She was the one that saw the other witch's demise. Lady Darklaw, are you saying that you're... <laughs> That's right, my lord. I am a shade. A shade? Oh, ashamed. <laughs> we all are. Lady Darklaw, <laughs> will you please tell the court exactly what you mean when you say shade? It's the opposite of light. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen an umbrella <laughs> or a tree? <laughs> it's really easy, my lord. I figured you would be smart to pick it up. Easy? Yes, of course. What is easy, High Inquisitor? If I may. He <laughs> <laughs> just, just sounds doggy. And you're like, my lord, you just snap it at him. He's like, just, nope, he's gone. <laughs> I grew weary. I grew with words. <laughs> What the heck is she trying to pull? Why testify about something that could potentially undermine your credibility? Shades live outside the realm of those who dwell in Labyrinthia. To them, I am known as the Great Witch. Those that are put to the flames in the witch trials become shades who live their lives in the woods. We exist to carry out tasks given to us by our mistress. The great witch herself. I am not a witch, nor am I a wandering spirit. What on earth? High Inquisitor Darklaw, do you mean to say that not only are you a witch, but you're the great witch? Unbelievable, oh. Lady Darlow, you witch! The great witch, so that means she's Brazilla. That's right, Lady Darlow, you believe it? Stop. Can aggressively, like, can't understand 
I do hope you have not forgotten what we established only moments ago. It is not possible for Miss Darklaw to be Bazella. But, but Inquisitor Layton, surely the testimony just now proves it. I am afraid that in heat of... Oh, I am afraid that in the heat of such revelations, you have all misheard the information. It is pointless. This is the extent of what the people of this town will believe. I believe the truth will become clear during our cross-examination. Don't you agree, Mr. Wright? I'm sure you're trying to lead me somewhere. I don't know where it is, dude. Well, if you need to figure it out, why don't you burn more of my hint coins? As though you earned well, you're them. You're not using them, so might as well. You All know right. those are supposed to be for my college fund, you bastard! <laughs> Jesus Christ, now I feel bad. Mifember, you may begin your intent. You're British, you don't need it. <laughs> okay. Tell the shades. Pinkling. Hold it! Pinkling. Great witch? What's that? Oh, BRB, half a second. Oh. Yes, that's right. However, I am not Bazella. The mistress to those who dwell in the Eldritch Woods is dubbed the Great Witch. Even I wanted to be a Bazella. I couldn't. Uh, as, as the ever so charming Inquisitor stated earlier, I cannot use magic. Darklaw's into Layton. Miss Darklaw, I have one qu <laughs> I mean, who isn't, though? I have right? one question. <laughs> what do you mean by live outside the realm? I mean, is that Inquisitor? We truly do live in a realm separate from this town. Now, surely one as intelligent as yourself has worked out the answer by now, no? Perhaps. That remains to be seen, Miss Darklaw. You can tell I'm flirting with you, can't you? It's oh, I... I'm afraid... I can't make that fucking joke! You haven't played the third game yet, never mind. Go on. <laughs> oh, dang it! <laughs> Regardless, tis something we cannot discuss with anyone. But it is something that the defense should be able to prove. Bees! This almost sounds like a challenge. This <laughs> in our trails read through, which we're finishing later tonight over on the Surprise Round RPG channel. Uh, and by we, I mean me and some other people who are not here right now. Um, Aram started this habit of whenever a character just reacts with uh, exclamation points or question marks, especially if it's in a pair of threes, would they just go, Bees! <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> By the way, Miss Darklaw, since you're not actually a witch, why do you continue to be called that? To answer that, I must first discuss the true identity of the shades. Time for another testimony, or... Oh, don't testimony. like to keep pressing, are you serious? Yeah, it's so dumb. It's like, why not just continue? That's ridiculous, Danny. Why would you expedite anything in a Professor Layton game? <laughs> Early, uh, yeah. I'm so... My an issue attorney. with this is just, like, the last bit seems very, like... Uh, elongated, like yeah, this, stretching it out. Like, this, I'm interested in the plot, but like this court section, like as a court section, has not been very good. Like, right. I know, I know, we're cheating our way through, but like you can kind of tell we have played enough of these games. So yes, oh my god, yes. So you're saying that the Kira here right now is the shade version of the Kira from before? Indeed, Defender. The girl has no recollection of her life prior to living in those woods. What manner of witchery is this? Why, this girl, uh, Kira the flower seller, was cast straight into the flames before our very eyes. That's right, Your Honor. But as you can see, she didn't die. You see, there's actually a trick to the incineration devices in the witch's court. A trick? Once the verdict has been delivered, the court attendants move the steel cage into position, after which it steals its seals shut. Then, the cage is dropped down into a pit of fire. The bottom of the cage then opens, allowing the witch inside to escape unharmed into an underground passage. If what you're saying is true, Defender, then what of this town's witch purging history? What has been the purpose of all of this? You know the knights have indeed been ri ridding Labyrinthia of witches. However, nary a single life has been taken in the process. That is the reality. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But uh, you cannot truly expect me to believe such a ridiculous notion. Uh, I don't know. Barnum? Barnum? Your Honor, it's true. Oh. oh. My. Great. Take a good hard look. 
It doesn't get any more alive than this! I'm not sure why we waited to do this, actually. It's, yes. it's you! I am me! <laughs> yeah. It's like us doing a joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually my fay, your forgetfulness. What the heck are you doing? Everyone's gonna recognize you! Yeah, but seeing is believing it, now they have to believe you. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you see? Are you satisfied? All those found guilty in the witch trials lose their names, magic, and memory. They are sent to spend their lives as shades in the Eldritch Woods. And the great mistress of those shades is the great witch. As you can see, this girl too has become a shade. I have no more words to express my utter disbelief at this situation. That's enough. Shall we return to the testimony? Why do I have a feeling things are gonna get a lot worse? Me whenever logic chess happens. No. It's still uh, pressing! Are you serious? Yeah, this is this is not gameplay, Ace Attorney. These tasks no. you mentioned, were you acting on them this evening? It's nice of them to let me use one hint coin for all this though. Hmm. Yes. I was told to come here and become Bazella. Uh, wait just a moment, witness. Did you just say become Bazella? My absolute gentle. Why would he be Why are they in Order! Order! Too rambunctious! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I was given such a task. All I can do is follow the orders I'm given. If I can do that, then I can return. What do you mean, you can return? Such is the, na such is the nature of the shades. Neither human nor witch. Theirs is an ex existence spent on something. Sorry. No, you're good. God, why is it? Each of the shades is given specific tasks. It's going really slow. Yeah, if it, if it starts chugging more, you might want to quickly, like, refresh and reload. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll be back. Oh, God. Then, upon successfully completing such tasks, they were allowed to return to Labyrinthia as brand new people. But... Lady Darklaw, how can they return as brand new citizens when we already know who they were? For instance, we all recognize the former flower seller standing before us. Now that me lord remains a secret, but a secret you will come to understand sooner rather than later. You could tell me. No. Wait, hang on. A I, I think we're getting feedback from you again. Oh, nope, it's gone. I don't know what's going on. Simply baffling! <laughs> the one who gives us our tasks is the Great Witch. That would be you, Lady Darklaw. Um, I mean, oh, magnificent one. Yes. Of, while this explanation is wrought with much I cannot comprehend, I request the witnesses add it to their testimony. I'm tired of pressing things. Okay. <laughs> Like you're just done with I, what I did I just on. say? <laughs> Why don't we talk more? So about these tasks, can you give us any other examples? What? Mr. Reich, I'm glad we aren't wasting time anymore. <laughs> don't speak. A shade's tasks must never be discussed with others, no matter what. <laughs> Question marks and exclamation points are bees, dots are ants. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. She says that even though she just finished telling us all about her- Oh, she says that even though she- She says that even- Incidentally, do you perhaps remember when you arrived <laughs> back in town to carry out your orders? Well, not really. My memory is still a little fuzzy. Say, didn't Kira only just recently become one of those shade thingies? Still, I- I failed in my task tonight. Come to think of it, when Luke and I had our little run-in with Kira, I remember being blown clear across the marketplace, but I never saw any explosives or gunpowder. Hmm, maybe... Kira was given the task of blowing you to smithereens, Nick! And we're done, getting back to this testimony. I'm sure there's something here that just doesn't add up. Good! Good, I like doing this! You really don't have any recollection of your old flower selling self, do you? Flower selling, more like flower pressing. <laughs> oh, I, that's pretty, I don't. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. 
When a witch becomes a shade, they lose all their memory of their past life. They lose their memories? But why? And yet you still have some grasp of the concept of magic, do you not, witness? Let me spell it out for you. Magic does not exist in the Eldritch Woods. Oh, but... There are actually lots of things back in the forest that I've not seen in this town. There, is it chugging for both of you guys? Do you want me to try restarting it? It's not chugging for me. Right. Um, it's good now. Okay. There are things you haven't seen here? Like really huge machines. That sort of thing. This one that spits up fire with such amazing speed. And then it expels these huge plumes of grey smoke. A machine that spits fire? Never have I heard of such a thing. <laughs> you the dragon! What do you think the witch pit is, Judge? What 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 do you think we're doing here? <laughs> are you certain that these machines of which you speak are not simply magic? No. You know. Now that you mention it, I don't think anyone from this town can actually see those of us from the forest. They can't see you? Could it be something like that robe? Hmm. How can such a thing even be possible without magic? Objection. Objection. Miss Darklaw, if I may interrupt for just a moment, as much as I enjoy 50 consecutive presses. Miss what Dar is it? Is it a <laughs> Through your testimony just now, we have all come to understand the process of how one becomes a shade. However, I was hoping you could perhaps elaborate on one additional point. Namely, what exactly is the purpose behind the shades? If you wish to know our purpose, there are certain other things you must first understand. Once you've done that, the answer should be quite clear. Isn't that right, Defender? Man, I don't know. <laughs> like, she's so busy flirting with Leighton that Phoenix is like, I don't know what the hell you're saying, lady. Leighton is trying to be like, isn't that right, Mr. Right? And trying to, like, throw him hints. Meanwhile, Dark Law is just like, yes, allow me to go over my schedule before and after the murder. I am going to be very free this weekend, if anyone's interested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Mr. Now that poor Zacharias is off the menu. <laughs> off the menu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, rest assured, you will not get the answer from me. As the saying goes, the witch is in your court, Defender. What? Sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I was like, excuse me? Sounds like Dark Law's challenging me to figure this out? Challenge accepted! Didn't you say that like a few minutes ago? Challenge accepted! Oh, thank God. Are we done pressing? Please. Please don't make me. Pre thank God. All right. <sighs> okay. What, I I keep forgetting this thing exists. So, all right. Oh. Maybe this. Make a familiar. I mean, it's got to be in here. I'm trying to like go to the beginning. So it's a fire circle. Maybe. Wouldn't be that. No. Ma. No. 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 Ma. Could be this. Maybe. Nah. Nah. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it's... Uh, oh, God. Objection. Something that doesn't exist. I have a feeling no one is going to like the answer I'm about to give, and it'll probably end up shaking this town to its core. The I've, internet. But I've got... <laughs> The internet is really, really great for witches. I've got to tell them. The truth has to come out. Since I arrived here in Labyrinthia, there's been no shortage of really strange events. Ignaz, Demir, Godor, Kyle. Goldor, and now Granworm. The mere command of magic is in itself a crime, is it not? In this town, witches are arrested and made to participate in witch trials. They are then sentenced to death by fire. But none of those witches actually died. That supposed death by fire wasn't real. And neither is magic. It doesn't really exist. What are you saying, Defender? Here we the, go, Leighton Twist. The Eldritch Woods, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Why was there even a court case leading up to this, to be honest? <laughs> 
the Eldritch Woods apparently contains some rather large machines, unlike anything that exists in Labyrinthia. God, I'd like to make jokes, but I can't. Machines that emit fire and produce large plumes of smoke. To top it all off, oh my god. They're not gonna tie this into that like weird drug smuggling ring from the London case, are they? <laughs> I hope not. To top it all off, the citizens of Labyrinthia are not able to see said machines. Sounds like nothing more than magic. Yes, that's exactly it, Your Honor. Miss Darklaw, magic doesn't really exist in this town. That's the answer, isn't it? M magic does not... <laughs> what utter nonsense! It seems we have finally arrived at the stunning conclusion. The secret behind Labyrinthia. What? What? <laughs> order! Order! Order, I say! What is the meaning of this? It means that all of the magic you've seen in this town was nothing more than an illusion created and put into motion by the Shades. But, Defender, the witches... We have clearly seen them using magic! Hmm. Let us take a moment to think carefully about the systems employed by the Shades. Systems? What is essential in order for a witch to use magic? The witch must possess a Talea Magica and must say an incantation in order to cast a spell. And the spells able to be cast are determined by the Scepter's magic gems. Now, what do you think is the purpose of placing such requirements on the use of magic? What do you mean, purpose? These requirements are not there to allow the user to cast magic. Rather, the reality is they are there to inform the Shades of who should be using magic. It is possible that witches were always being closely observed by Shades. That is why they don these robes, to appear hidden until they were needed to create magic. Create? Indeed. There are all kinds of spells within this tome. It would be quite troublesome if they were simply allowed to use any spell at will. Yeah, it would make the Shades' jobs that much more difficult, for sure. Precisely so. That is why it was imperative that a certain restriction be placed on the use of magic. <sighs> You're referring to the Talea Magica, right, prof uh, right Professor? Of course. No wonder the scepter could only contain two magic gems. Then there's the incantation. What would happen if a witch could simply whisper the incantation quietly to herself, or not even say it at all? Boy, oh, that'd be so cool. I'd be casting spells all day long and no one would ever see it coming. Maya, we spent an entire trial proving you weren't a witch, remember? <laughs> ah! If the witches didn't give some sort of signal, then there would be no way for the Shades to know when to cast the spell. Right you are, Mr. Wright. The incantations were a way of telling the Shades when witches were ready to use magic. What on earth? Never did I think these requirements could have such a purpose! What the fuck? <laughs> now, let's think back to the previous events leading up to today that have involved magic. I love this. <laughs> Our first encounter with magic was the use of spe the spell Ignaz a few nights ago. A spell like this. Was nothing more than a flame being spewed by a machine. Uh, be, oh, nothing more than a flame spewed by a machine being used by the shades. That's pretty fucked up. There were people in there. Mm -hmm. Then that means Demir, a spell that makes the caster disappear. No doubt about it. It must have been this robe. Next, I love how it's just like, oh, this is a cloaking robe. That's not magic, though. <laughs> no, that's Wait, not. How does it disappear then, actually? Well, that's just cloaking technology, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Next is the incident with Goldor, the spell that transmuted me into a gold statue. While I understand this may sound a bit absurd, I can only surmise that the Shades created a gold statue in my image, took me, and left it in my place the instant the incantation was uttered. Maya was too <laughs> stupid to notice any of that happening. Professor! It's no more absurd than anything else that's happened so far. We can therefore conclude that all of the magic in Labyrinthia was created in a similar vein. What do you say to that, Miss Darklaw? I'd expect nothing less from you, Inquisitor Layton. 
she wants booty so hey, bad. Hey, 500 viewers. That is a record for casual <gasps> stuff oh, on this channel. Wow. Yay. Hi. Um, I didn't give in time. There was, there were five, woo, there were between five and ten witches in town. All the witches were accompanied by shades at, the, at all times. Somebody, someone in chat, uh, fuck, someone just said something. What about the fucking green wall transparency? I don't know. <laughs> don't ask questions. Hold on. Um, real quick, did somebody just donate money? Well, no, I, I think that's just some kind of... That's a thing? Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that's like a highlighted colored message or something. Oh. Okay. It was easier than you would think. You see, the shades living in the Eldritch Woods total in the hundreds. It was simply a matter of having each of the shades operate in shifts in order to watch over each of the witches within the town. I must say, Lady Darklaw, that is quite a number of shades. It was not only those who fell victim to the flames that were turned into shades, but their victims were too made... Well, oh, uh, the, but their victims too were made permanent residents of the Eldritch Woods. Th then... Those two shady thieves from before were turned into shades? Oh, I was right. Ah, uh, yes. You mean robs and mugs. <laughs> Forgot about that. Despite their dubious appearance, those two were a couple of my best shades. You see, the storyteller set this all up because he just wanted his daughter to live in an interesting little fantasy world. <laughs> Shady thieves turned into shades. The stuff writes itself. I cannot believe what I have heard. Ants. Ants. <laughs> <laughs> However, there is still one thing I do not understand just yet. And what would that be? As has just been explained, we have established that there is no possibility of magic being real, but replacing me with a gold statue to give the illusion of transmutation, for example. While it sounds simple enough, I myself, and presumably also Miss Fay, have no recollection of this replacement actually taking place. Hey, that's right! The professor got all bling-blingy before I could even bat an eye! It begs the question, how and when was that statue created, let alone used to replace me? That is true. The same goes for Godor. It's supposed to create a portal between two green-colored walls. Perhaps... The green screen? Perhaps that is exactly why the spell can only work on green walls, Mr. Wright. <sighs> It'd be impossible for the Shades to get those portals ready so quickly. I agree. This is... Hmm... There is another latent game that has almost this exact twist. It is not the third one. I agree. If we take a moment to think, we can see that all of these spells have one strange thing in common. A thing in common? Yes, indeed. Almost as if some time between the start and end of the incident was unaccounted for. Time travel. Furthermore, any memory I might have had regarding these incidents seems to have simply disappeared in the process. Uh, I've got it! Nick, it's just like what happened to Kira. She's got absolutely no memory of her life in Labyrinthia before the trial, right? I I yes, I do not remember this Kira you speak of. And, oh yeah, when you really think about it, doesn't it seem super weird how the Shades were able to return to town to complete their tasks? You're right, Maya. I mean, the townsfolk are bound to remember some things about them, right? Like how Miss Kira here threw a major hissy fit in court and was barbecued for being a witch. Maybe want to dial back the language there? Eloquently put, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Hence, we cannot yet conclude that this entire illusion was primarily accomplished through the use of machinery. Simply put, there must have been some way of affecting the memories of all those within the confines of this town. Is it the bell? No, I think it's, Missing... the, it's the potions they were making. Oh, okay. Missing time and lost memories? Now that is interesting, Inquisitor. You are correct. There is, in fact, a secret that lies within the depths of the Eldritch Woods. Something that the people of this town cannot see. Something that can rob people of their time and memories. It is the very thing that connects all of what you have heard tonight. It is a secret of monumental proportions. And let me guess. Tis a secret that cannot be revealed by the mistress of the Eldritch Woods. Is that right? Yes. An excellent deduction, Defender. 
This is bullshit. Witches' souls wander astray within the old witch woods. Until tonight, I thought this nothing but a mere fairy tale told to children. But it has become clear that a seemingly large organization lies within that forest. The witch's court is the border between this world and the other world. Then that means, in this world, you're Labyrinthia's High Inquisitor, while also being a mistress to the Shades in the other world, otherwise known as the Great Witch, Dots. May I intervene for just a moment, Mr. Wright? Uh, sure. In all honesty, there is still something that sticks out as a little odd. Particularly, excuse me, particularly in Miss Darklaw's previous. T is something wrong with your tongue, Inquisitor? May I investigate? <laughs> Keep it holstered. <laughs> Did you just say the previous testimony? Uh, I'd already pushed that out of my head. There was one vital truth that we managed to take away from that testimony. You mean that magic does not truly exist in Labyrinthia? Indeed, quite the vital, albeit shocking, truth. However, there is one more truth hidden within that same testimony. There's something oh else in that testimony? I must have checked the court record more times than I can count, but I didn't find a single other contradiction. That's why I pressed 30 times in a row. Have you forgotten all- When the all... game acknowledges that, like, I feel like it defeats the purpose. You are correct. <laughs> Have you forgotten already, God. Mr. Wright? When there is no evidence left, we have but one more weapon at our disposal with which to unravel. Logic! He takes out his the sword from the top of the tower. <laughs> oh, hey, I've got it, Nick. Remember in a witch trial, you can cross-examine two witnesses at the same time. Yeah, we did that in this trial. I'm not sure yeah. why we needed this little loop-de-loop. -loop. Being able to have a look at two testimonies side by side is bound to turn up a contradiction somewhere. And that contradiction should provide us a much needed clue. Yeah, I'm in, again, I'm interested in the story, but like, I'm just playing this going, this would have just been better as a Professor Layton segment and we shouldn't have even had a court case. Yes. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm not entirely sure where the professor's going with this, but I believe in his judgment. Besides, if we've got if we're going to blow this case wide open, it's gotta be worth a shot. Very well, let's fucking do this. This is it. Miss Darklaw's <laughs> previous testimony. There's a glaring prediction oh. Okay. I'm known as the great Is it the was? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, Barnum took over for her. Objection. <laughs> Bam. They like ran across the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you saw Layton's acrobatics earlier. He just backflipped over there. Your honor, yeah. there's obviously a huge discrepancy between these two pieces of testimony. Miss Darklaw stated she is known as the Great Witch. However, according to Miss Kira's testimony, Miss Darklaw was her venerable mistress, the Great Witch. That is correct. She was the Great Witch. Note Miss Kira's use of the past tense. You see, her memory has been demonstrated to be very reliable. Past tense. I'm afraid my grammar is not quite what it used to be. May I ask what you mean? Are you fit to be a judge? <laughs> it's simple. Miss Darklaw was the mistress to the Shades, or as they also called her, the Great Witch. Therefore, she is no longer the Great Witch. She is not the Great Witch. Witness, this is true. Witness. Uh, uh, Witness. I. I want to answer. Don't answer me. It is as you have heard, my lord. What? B. B. I relinquished my position as Great Witch in order to fulfill the objective of this task. What would that objective be again? That would be the assassin. late him. Well. Oh my. <laughs> he blushes a little. <laughs> that would be the assassination of the storyteller, Your Honor. Witness! At the beginning of this trial, you stated that you came to town in order to complete your task, didn't you? What's more, you said that you were going to summon the Fire Dragon to do it. Now, uh, this task. It wasn't Miss Darklaw that gave it to you, was it? No, it wasn't. So then, 
The most pressing question is, who was it that gave you that task? Who told you to come to Labyrinthia and assassinate the storyteller? It was none was it other. Actually, Barnum. It was and none other she... than Carmine Accidenti. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot tell you, no matter what. I, I'm still hoping after all of this, it's the cat. All right. <laughs> so Darklaw isn't the Great Witch anymore, which must mean the mastermind behind this entire thing is. Hmm. It would seem the defense has worked it out as well. Mr. Wright, you know who really gave Miss Kira her task tonight, do you not? Defender, I ask that you enlighten the court. He's not an option, so that's not great. <laughs> Show us who really gave this witness her task to assassinate the storyteller. I actually don't know. Oh. Pickling. Well, I mean, probably the storyteller, <laughs> but I gotta do the cat. I don't. I don't care if this is wrong. <laughs> hmm. No. As usual, defender, the only thing I see you pointing out is your innate ability to correctly point inability. I misread it. <laughs> defender. Pray this mysterious mastermind gets their hands on you before I do. I want it to be the cat, though! Mr. The Wright. The cat would have been really good. It pains me to say this, but it seems as if I might have overestimated you. Now, this time... <laughs> Could you not just give me the answer? What high up. Uh... Yeah. It's the cat! All right. <laughs> the... Storyteller. We're talking about someone with the authority and power to replace the Great Witch. Someone who calls the shots. I can't think of anyone else that meets those criteria, except for the storyteller himself. Preposterous! Then that would mean... Exactly, Your Honor. It means that the storyteller gave his final task to Kira himself. He was, in short, responsible for his own assassination. What?! Ma! Ma, there's a weird storyteller outside! <laughs> order! Order, order in the court! But for what purpose? Why would he plan his own assassination? It's time for a long talk about mental health. That I cannot say, Your Honor. However, the final chapter of the story does tell of his inevitable death. While he assigned the task to Kira himself, it is perfectly natural that he would do so. However, what is not natural is your behavior tonight, Miss Darklaw. Yes. What, what was unnatural about the High Inquisitor's behavior? What is natural about it? Have you been paying any attention? I don't know what the past tense of is is. <laughs> yeah. You were once the head of all the shades, and yet tonight you tried to interfere with the storyteller's plan. You render- Oh, the reason it's like, if we do our tasks, we can come back, because he'll write us back in. You rendered Miss Kira unconscious and locked her away in the belfry of the bell tower. That, to me, seems like the activity of someone aiming to put a stop to his plan altogether. I indeed. Lady Darklaw, what would be the reason for such behavior? I leave that to you, Mr. Wright. Why? I still think it's the cat. <laughs> Based on what we've seen in this trial, the defense believes Miss Darklaw's reason for covering up her actions tonight can only be attributed to one thing. This plan was handed down by the storyteller himself, and Miss Darklaw was definitely aiming to put a wrench in it, but why? I... I don't know, man. Tinkling. There's only one possible reason I can think as to why Miss Darklaw had to hide her actions tonight. She was aiming to betray the storyteller. Betray the storyteller? I agree, Mr. Wright. The storyteller used the Great Witch Bazella to take his own life. Instructions to carry out the plan were given to Miss Kira. However, Miss Darklaw planned to intervene and change the scenario at the very last minute. She planned to do so by changing the identity of the Great Witch from Miss Kira to Miss Contabella. Thus, bringing us to our current situation. 
Miss Contabella on trial for the murder of her father at the hands of Bazella. You, Miss Darklaw, seem to harbor a rather strong hatred for the storyteller, if I am not mistaken. <laughs> a hatred, you say? Yes, I suppose you could call it that. B! <laughs> That's right. Behold, my revenge. Did you say revenge, Miss Darklaw? Yes. Will you please tell the court your plan for revenge? If you insist. I do. Press me eight times. Oh, okay. Is this voice acted? Doesn't look like it. Okay. The High Inquisitor, and also the Great Witch. Long have I donned those two masks. One is Labyrinthia's protector, the other its harbinger of destruction. In other words, I was merely meant to serve him. And yet, he sought to selfishly pen the ending of the story under his own terms. He did not care enough about me, or any of the townspeople, to allow us the dignity of deciding our own fate. Indeed, what we witnessed tonight was the cowardly act of a man looking for an easy way to end that which he could not properly finish. He cared for no one but himself. Hence the sudden sham of an ending. And for that, I will never forgive him. What do you mean by a sham of an ending? The Great Witch Bazella is to summon a dragon of fire and end the life of the Creator. She will then be put on trial and judged, thus heralding a period of peace and prosperity for all of Labyrinthia. Such is the ending written for this town and its people. It is not an ending, I suppose, in I oppose in principle. Who would not wish a happy ending for their own people? However, the problem lies in Bazella's identity. Bazella's identity? As you know, he assigned the great the role of the Great Witch to this girl beside me. But you're saying that was a falsehood. Is that correct? I knew Bazella's true identity. It is not something I could ever forget. That is why I went to the bell tower, and it is why I took the accused there. I did it to ensure the true witch foretold in the story was given the judgment she was due. The true witch? You don't mean... Yes, I speak of none other than Espella Cantabella. I'm still here. Hello. <laughs> Objection. Miss Darklaw, there's a glaring contradiction in your statement. And what would that be? Do you know what past tense means? It's supposedly common knowledge that Bazella is capable of using all magic. However, that is far from the truth. Magic does not actually exist in this town. It was all one giant illusion created by the Shades. Therefore, the Great Witch Bazella cannot exist either. That's a lot of ants. That's an army of ants. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. By Dark Law. <laughs> you fool. Defender, you really don't have a clue, do you? Obviously not. Uh, but, but wait just a minute now. Is the Defender not correct? If magic does not exist, then it goes without saying that witches do not exist either. And that would include the Great Witch, would it not? That's right. I've right. been lying to us this whole time. Ah, my favorite insult when you don't want an M-rated game. <laughs> Objection. Everyone shut the fuck up again. Mr. Wright. <laughs> there is a fundamental mistake in your argument. What do you mean? I have but one simple question. I say that a lot, don't I? What mm -hmm. exactly is Bazella? Huh? Well, uh, she's... Supposed to be the head of all witches. No, no, no. Allow me to reword the question. The Great Witch Bazella is the root of all disaster within Labyrinthia. Knowing that, what specific disaster might she have been the root of? You see, Bazella is actually the name of a gas that makes you forget your own memories, but it's very flammable. That would be, um... I just thought of something. We've been hearing Bazella's name left and right since we got... Here, but not once has the real Bazella shown up in person. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed, Miss Fay. 
Bezella herself has been virtually absent from the story thus far. But Inquisitor, did she not claim the life of the storyteller tonight? It would appear so, Your Honor. However, there is just one more thing. Consider this. Which particular story is every citizen of Labyrinthia most familiar with? Well, that would have to be the legendary fire, right? Precisely. Surely you're not serious. As the name implies, that is but mere legend. No one knows for certain if it occurred, then what the fuck are you mad about? So they say. But the reality is, there are still traces of that terrible fire within the town today. The professor's right. We've even seen some of it up close and personal. I was under the impression everyone was already on this page. I didn't know we needed to prove the legendary fire really happened. Hey, yeah, yeah at the Great Archive! You are indeed correct, Inquisitor. Littered throughout the town are burnt remnants from a fire most fierce. But who is to say this fire was legendary? Fuck you! Let me see if I have this straight. There's an entire town full of people and no one saw what happened. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's almost as unlikely as somebody <laughs> using a hot air balloon to fly above a populated area of a city to crush the president of Zheng Fa, except for oh, one God. particular person. There is one person who saw everything. Luke. I am speaking, of course, of the one responsible for the fire itself. The Great Witch Bazella. Well, yeah, because it said that everyone fucking died in the fire, so... Yeah, I assume this is... Espella? Yes. <laughs> I'm baby. I'm baby! <laughs> I... Remember it. All of it. Espella, what are you saying? You'll have to press me. <laughs> Twenty more times! When I close my eyes, I can picture it so vividly. The awful sight of the flames engulfing everything they touched. The scorching heat on my skin. The smell of burning cinder all around me. The, the large plumes of black smoke. The warm tears streaming down my face. I remember it all. What you are recalling now is the moment the Great Witch Bazella destroyed our town. Well, it appears my role here is finished. As for the rest... You didn't do anything. <laughs> I leave it in your capable hands, Inquisitor. I hope I get to come back into the story at some point. <laughs> she... Me too. Whoa! Amir. She used Amir. Yeah. Huh? Darklot? She just... Oh, oh, okay. They're actually doing it. She's vanished into thin air. Poof. She's right. These memories are proof that I am Bazella. Oh. But, Espella... Mr. Wright, uh, remember, if you will, what I said at the beginning of this trial. I came here to prove that Espella Contabella is, in reality, the Great Witch Bazella. Right. There is still one thing. Oh, getting a little feedback again, I think. What? Is it gone? I don't know what the fuck that is. I was hearing that, too. I think it's gone again, though. There is still one more thing I wish to present to the court. I would now like to call the final witness to the stand. The final oh. witness? Storyteller. Shirtless Barnum. Yes, yes! Shirtless Barnum, finally! <laughs> ah, it would appear he has arrived. Baby daddy, no! How many old voices <laughs> can <daddy>. Jello do? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I give you this trial's final witness, the storyteller. Luke is holding him on his shoulders. And just like that, he appeared. I assume this is actually the man who died not hours before. And the victim of this very trial, the storyteller himself. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I had to pop something off in chat. The professor sure chose one heck of a final witness. The morning is drawing closer and closer. How this trial will end is anyone's guess. Yeah, that I don't think any of that segment needed to be court. No, no, it didn't. That's what frustrated me with this game. It's like the last, the last tail end was just very like yeah, it's, unnecessary. It's rough to end on a bad case. Yes, but I just I, I I won't say how I feel about the ending until you finish. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> I've heard extremely mixed things about the ending. I mean, I guess it's gonna be like 
it's a latent ending, so I'm gonna guess it's gonna be very dumb, but the emotionality will kind of make it work for me. We'll see. Mm -hmm.